Hi, I'm Hannah, and many of you may know me as the woman who is trying to hunt and kill God. But today I bring you my brand new YouTube channel, and with it, a Mike's, Mike style plot, character, analysis, and deep dive into the secret life of the American teenager. I'm such a whore. Well, <laughs> you're my whore. Let's fall in love. Now, I'm filming this after I finish making the video in its entirety. I'm going to cut back and forth here between the intro I filmed before and the intro I filmed afterwards, after I knew exactly what I was doing and why. And I'm gonna come back to this version of Hannah to explain the rules of the game that I have created after making the video because things changed as I went. If you like it, just let me know so, and maybe I'll come back and do something else for y'all. I am not gay, I am deeply heterosexual. Gay. First of all, why am I doing this? Because I feel I have been called to, to bring this content to you. I'm a huge fan of Mike's videos. The Pretty Little Liars one and the Glee one, I mean, come on. And my girlfriend and I have been watching Secret Life of the American Teenager for months now. This show, like, sucks the life out of you in the best way, of course. There was just so much stuff that came up that I'm like, how is nobody talking about this show? But it seems like when I talked to people in real life, they were like, well, I watched that show when it was on, but I don't remember much about it. I wanted to remind everyone about it. And if you haven't watched it, you don't have to because I'm going to bring you all the good content from it. Also, some general disclaimers for my content here. If the, the wall is crooked at all, I don't want to hear about it. I don't care. Okay. If I'm sweaty, I don't want to hear about it. I know. I know I'm sweaty. If you can hear background noise or, you know, my <laughs> production quality here isn't the best. I don't want to hear about it, okay? I'm using my Rock Band 4 microphone. I have my computer over there recording my audio and my iPhone in front of me on a tripod I bought yesterday. And I'm using this, this light that my mom bought for me because she thought it would cure my depression. It didn't. It gives me a headache, but that's what I'm working with. I'm a law student. I have severe ADHD. I just took my Adderall. So I'm hoping, I mean, I'm banking on the fact that I'm going to calm down a bit soon. <laughs> the general idea here is I'm going to be mapping out mostly relationships because I do think that is the most interesting part of the show. Right now, I have the characters on the wall. This, of course, if you have seen the show, is not all of the characters. The big character plates are like who I would consider to be the main slash supporting characters. And then I'm going to add some smaller characters right now. This is the only one that's up, but like we'll get more. There's a bunch of smaller characters over there. And we're going to reveal characters as we go, as they are revealed to us. I almost forgot. I almost forgot the best part. I've also made this. Uh, it says, I am in jail. I'm going to be moving this around to whoever deserves to be in jail the most at the point in time I'm talking about. If a character does something particularly egregious, they're going to jail and they're going to hold this. So like, if Amy's going to go to jail, which, spoiler alert, I bet she's going to be in jail quite a bit, sh that's going to be over her. Hi, I'm interjecting here to explain the rules of the game from after finishing because when I started this, I like didn't exactly know what I was going to do and now that I'm done, I know what I did and I know <laughs> the way I did it. So here's how it's gonna go. I set out to do a plot explanation, a plot analysis and kind of like diagram of the show. It's not going to be like this in-depth analysis, making sure I hit every single thing that happens because that'd be impossible because it's an ensemble cast and also there's so much that goes on. But I did make sure to map out every relationship and connection between people that happens in the show because I think the most interesting part of it all is how many people are like interconnected and how everybody sleeps with each other and like hooks up with each other. And then as for the tape, I used four tape colors in my diagram, which you will be able to see. I used blue to show family connections. So that would be like father, mother, brother, sister, cousin, like any family. Green is friends or some sort of 
friendship connection that I feel is strong enough to deserve a line. Red is a relationship, a committed and named relationship. And pink is any romantic and physical sexual contact outside of being in a committed relationship. I basically am going to take you through an episode by episode breakdown and show you how bat shit it is because seriously it's just wild thank you all for being here i'm very appreciative and let's go i'm thinking about having sex with my brother the first thing you need to know about secret life of the american teenager is that the show was created by brenda hampton menace she created seventh heaven after that was done she was like hold on what if i continue my christian propaganda So that's exactly what she did. Secret Life aired on ABC Family from 2008 to 2013. It has five seasons, each more horrendous than the last. Here's a fun fact, you guys. It broke the record, Kyle XY's record, for the most watched premiere of a show on ABC Family ever. The show was actually originally supposed to be called The Sex Life of the American Teenager, which, as you'll see... Maybe it should have been, because all they talk about every episode is sex. Like, I think someone counted, and the average count of the word sex being said was, like, 26 times per episode, and these episodes are 40 minutes without commercials. Season 1, episode 1 of the show opens with Amy. (laughs) Played by Shailene Woodley of the Divergent series, walking into her house. A little bit about Amy. Amy's our main character here. Some words I would use to describe her are selfish evil devil. She's a little witch. We also see Anne, played by none other than Molly Ringwald, her mother, at the kitchen counter. Hey, glad you're home. Molly Ringwald, who has played other roles such as mom on archie i mean mom on (laughs) mom on riverdale hi sorry to interrupt but i'm going to insert here a youtube poop i made of a clip from riverdale of molly ringwald being a lawyer and trying to get archie off of murder i hope you enjoy because i've been crying over this for 20 minutes ladies and archie andrews and gentlemen and archie andrews and cheryl blossom We know for a fact that Archie Andrews constantly punched duty. We know that he punched Cheryl Blossom. Well, let me remind you that there were no witnesses to the actual duty. All the prosecution has is cloudy duty from unreliable Archie Andrews. Now, it is my solemn evidence as an enemy who punched my butt to adhere to the duty. The duty proves that Archie Andrews is killing ladies and punched my son. Thank you is in um, this show as mom. I don't know, like, maybe I just, like, haven't seen enough of her stuff, but I always had this idea that she was, like, a good actress. If that's the case, it's gone out the window for this. Molly Ringwald actually sings the theme song for the show. Falling in love Words to describe Anne as a character, MILF. Now Amy's walking in, she's in her band uniform. She's just gotten back from band camp. We find out that Amy is starting high school tomorrow. She gets back from band camp, right back on the bus, baby. Let's go, high school's starting. She rushes past Anne into the bathroom. She was hiding a pregnancy test in her French horn. I have uh, like thousands of questions. You're only young once should be having a little fun pulls out the test takes it and it says pregnant play the 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 opening credits of the show after the credits we get our first iconic use of avril lavigne's girlfriend being played as all of the students walk into the high school after summer break for the first time. And this is where we're going to meet a lot of the main characters. So it's going to go kind of quick here. But Amy meets up with her friends, Madison and Lauren. Madison and Lauren are her friends from middle school. Those are her girls, okay? And Amy is saying to them, I had sex. 
I had sex this summer. And she tells them she thinks she's pregnant. I had sex. Madison and Lauren are supporting characters. These two now have an OnlyFans together. And I can't say I'm not interested. Facts about Madison are some words to describe her. She's very stupid. That's her main personality trait. She's stupid and for about three episodes in season one, she is a Catholic. Lauren is the opposite of Madison. She is an atheist and likes abortion. <laughs> her dad is the only psychologist in the whole town. So anytime someone sees a mental doctor, it's him. I would like to point out, Madison and Lauren are connected by a line that is not connected to Amy because they two have like a relationship separate from Amy as well. They're closer friends together than they are as a trio with Amy involved. Next, we see, walking through the doors, Ricky and Adrian. It's not good for a guy. It's unhealthy. Yeah, just Dangerous, even. Oh, that's too bad. No. It's very clear right away. Ricky is the bad boy, and Adrian is the bad girl of the school, and they are together. Ricky is played by Darren Kagasoff. Daddy. He's the bad boy drummer. Adrian is played by Francia Reza. Her whole personality is promiscuous daddy issues, which I support her for. The next person we see walking into the school is Grace. Just music, dancing. Grace um, is played by Megan Park, who is now a Hallmark actor, Slay. I am a Hallmark head. In this, her entire personality is Christian cheerleader. Also, I learned while researching for this that Miss Brenda Hampton creator and general menace said i loosely modeled the character of grace after my niece who is a christian and was a cheerleader in high school but unlike grace my niece stuck to her commitment to not have sex until marriage brenda nobody needed to know that but thank you anyway i don't need to know about that you keep that to yourself that's a spoiler alert for grace having sex in the future we also meet the guidance counselor. Um, guidance counselors play a very weird role in this universe. I'm not even going to put them up here, but they're just like the only adults at the school. Anything at school, the guidance counselor is taking care of it. Next, we meet my worst nemesis, Benjamin. I'm a virgin. He has a crush on Grace, and his friends are Henry and Alice. She's not a goddess, she's a Christian. I would become a Christian if I could have Grace Bowman. Ben is played by Kenny Bauman. What kind of name is Kenny for an adult man? Words to describe him are rich and slimy little rat boy. He's just a slimy little rat. Fucking little telltale rat. Fucking little telltale rat! Okay. Anyway, um, you're a rodent. You're a scurrying little fucking filth. It's little like infested rodent in the back of the class. Anyway, Alice is played by Amy Ryder and Henry is p played by Alan Evangelista. They're just always around Ben. Everyone is either at this point a sophomore or a freshman. So we have Amy, Madison, Lauren, Alice, and Henry, and Grace are all freshmen. Ricky, Jack, and Adrian are all sophomores. I'm gonna add these relationships and then I'll be right back. We haven't even met Jack yet, but I put Jack blind. So Alice and Henry, Ricky and Adrian, and gra <laughs> grass, Grace and Jack. Ben has a crush on Grace. And Alice says to him, hey, uh, Grace is a little bit out of your league. Grace is a cheerleader and she's really popular and you're nerdy. Alice suggests that Ben should go for Amy, not knowing that she's pregnant. Shortly after that, Ricky sees her, comes up to her and says, don't think I could forget what we did this summer. Ricky is the father of Amy's baby. Bruh, bruh. Ricky and Amy had sex at band camp. Ricky is also in band because he plays the drums, hence the drumsticks in his back pocket. Him and Amy hooked up at band camp, which was Amy's first time having sex, and she got pregnant. Amy rushes to the bathroom <laughs> to meet up with Madison and Lauren, who are bringing her pregnancy tests up the wazoo. Madison, in an effort to get everyone out of the bathroom and acting completely normal, says, get out, I'm going to puke. Everyone clears out of the bathroom and she puts a sign on the door that says, do not come in, poop city. <laughs> Just the girls in the bathroom now. Flash over. We're going to meet Jack now. Excuse me if this sounds vulgar. Played by Greg Finley. And his character is Football Boy. He is also the son of the 
town's pastor, who is apparently the only pastor because they all go to the same church. He is Christian, just like Grace, and they are in a relationship. The first conversation we see him in is him pressuring Grace to have sex and her saying, I want to wait until we're married and we won't get married until after I finish college and med school. And Jack is like, hold on, that's like at least 12 years away. And she says, yes. Is oral sex allowed before marriage? I'm going to put Jack in jail. It's not okay to pressure your significant other into s having sexual activities. Congratulations to Jack for being our first prisoner. We find out that Grace was given a promise ring by her parents, which is a little bit weird. So she's all excited. She's not going to have sex till marriage. This is a problem with the ensemble cast. Everyone's doing everything at once. Ben is meeting with guidance counselor Mark. He's on his incel grind. He's complaining to Mark Molina about how he's 15 and he's never had sex. And because of that, he must be let into band so that he can seduce Amy and have sex with her. Just tell me why you want in the band. I've been rejected by the French horn player. A certain Amy something or other. Uh, therefore, I've decided that I'm in love with her and cannot live without her. Ergo, I must take up an instrument and join the band. All motivated by the fact that I'm 15, I'm a virgin. If I ever want to have a sex life, I've got to start somewhere. I think I'm going to have to put Ben in jail for that. Ben's in jail for being an incel. Now it's later, and Amy is at her house, which is when we're going to meet the rest of her family. First, we have George Slay. He's my favorite character. You're not sexy. Played by Mark Derwin. Words to describe him, dad, daddy, lesbian rights. Ashley is played by India Isley. Man, she is such a fake. She is Amy's younger sister, so she's in middle school currently. Words to describe her are emo, goth, and mean. George and Ashley have a much stronger relationship than anybody else in the family, so that's why they have their friendship line. They're all eating dinner. Ashley has been dress coded at school for wearing a crop top. We don't like being embarrassed by our 13-year-old daughter who insists on dressing like a streetwalker. I mean, you don't even know what sexy means. It means you're ready to have sex, and you are not ready to have sex. Neither of my daughters are ready to have sex, and you two will not be ready to have sex for a long time. Ooh, a long, long time. Someone calls the phone, and it's Ben, and he's asking her to Grace's church dance. Now, we're going to move over to Grace's family. Grace's mom is named Kathleen. She is played by Josie Bissett, and she has the most villainous haircut. This haircut ages her by, like, 30 years. To prove my point about the aging, this is season one Kathleen on the left and season four Kathleen on the right. What the motherfuck were the hairstylists thinking? Grace's dad is Marshall. Everyone's dad tends to be like the town something. He's the town doctor. She wants to follow in his footsteps and go to medical school. And he's played by John Schneider from Dukes of Hazard. Grace has a brother named Tom, played by Luke Zimmerman. Words to describe them. Kathleen, seriously, this haircut is just so villainous. As soon as she gets rid of it, she's a milf. Marshall is Mr. Boring. And Tom, to put it lightly, Tom is a major slay. Hey, little interruption here. I just wanted to say that I did decide to cut out part of Ricky's backstory from this segment of the video. There is a plot line that involves some sensitive subjects that could severely trigger some people. I ended up just taking it out of my plot analysis completely. However, I felt like it would be doing viewers a disservice if I did not include any kind of warning because someone could go and watch the show on their own and be triggered by this content because the show doesn't give any warnings before they present it. So this is your trigger warning if you are sensitive to subjects of SA, CSA, please be careful before you decide to go watch the show. I will say that there is not a ton of this plot line, it just has to do with one character's backstory, and it is mentioned heavily in a few episodes in the first season, and then very, very vaguely mentioned after the first season. It's, it's nothing detailed or explicit. However, the first season could be quite triggering, so I just wanted to give you a heads up for that and let you know why I cut that out and also give you a warning if you do decide to go watch the show. We now see Jack, 
saying a weird sex prayer to his football team. <laughs> Give us the strength to do thy will, especially when it's much easier to give in to the pleasures of the flesh. Let us not be distracted by the women who are here to lead us into situations that would lead us straight into hell and destroy our souls forever. But to cheer us on to victory. There. Short skirts. Tight sweaters. And... Before the football game, Adrian approached Jack. And Adrian's mad at Ricky because Ricky no longer wants to be in a relationship. So she asked Jack if he wants to hook up before the church dance. Now we're at the church party, everyone's here. We learn that Ben is rich. When I say eat the rich, I mean Ben. Because Adrian's going for Jack, Ricky is going for Grace. He is like, I am going to corrupt the Christian girl. Wouldn't it be epic if I could get Grace to have sex with me? Adrian and Jack show up to the dance, and it is very clear that they have just hooked up. He just could not stand to be without the poon. Jack is now again praying and asking God to forgive him for having premarital sex. Well, let me add their sex line. I think the tornado alarms are going off. I would never leave this video for a tornado siren. Adrian and Jack have now hooked up. Everyone else is inside dancing. Amy and Ben are now like some sort of an item. Grace is dancing with Ricky. Tom leaves the ballroom and walks out to see, dun dun dun, Jack and Adrian kissing. Grace! Grace! When Tom screams, everyone rushes out of the ballroom and sees what's going on. Grace breaks up with Jack because he cheated on her. Ricky doesn't really care because he's trying to get with Grace. So he's like, wow, this is fantastic. That's the end of the episode. Jack's in jail now. Season one, episode two. At the end of the dance, everything's in shambles. So let's let's dissect that. Adrian's mad at Ricky because Ricky doesn't want to be in a relationship anymore. Ricky's mad at Amy because Amy is with Ben. Ben is with Amy because he wants to be with Grace. Adrian's with Jack because she's mad at Ricky. Grace is now mad at Jack and they're no longer dating because Jack cheated on her with Adrian. Got that? Rumors are starting to swirl that Amy is pregnant. Madison and Lauren, being idiots like they are, spilled the beans to Ben's besties. So now Alice and Henry know Ricky uh, got Amy pregnant. Later that night, Ben calls Amy and leaves her a really weird voicemail saying he still wants to be with her. How nice. This is also the episode where we are first introduced to the concept of Amy having a stutter. I can't talk. My parents are making me study. Just stop calling me. This is something that lasts for a few episodes in the first season and then is never brought up again. And apparently Amy stutters when she lies. <laughs> She's stuttering up the wazoo and Ashley says, I know you're lying because you're stuttering. And if it's a really big lie, you start stuttering again. Cut to Ricky and Adrian are hooking up. Ben and Amy meet up and Ben tells Amy he loves her. <laughs> you're Amy Jerkins, the girl that I love. Uh... They just start dating, their boyfriend, girlfriend now, and uh, Ben loves her. Season one, episode three, we find out Amy's dad, George, used to be married to Grace's mom. How interesting is this? Because of this, Anne is enemies with Kathleen. She hates her husband's ex-wife for no real reason. I, I thought you were on good terms with the Bowman. Are you on good terms with your husband's ex-wife's husband? But Grace and Tom are not related to Amy and Ashley at all. Okay, Slay. We also get this iconic line. My clothes no longer fit because I'm fat. Well, maybe we could get you like a big safety pin. You know, like those giant pins they put on <sighs> diapers? Ashley finds out that Amy is pregnant. And she's like, I'm going to protect you and your baby. Slay, don't even worry about it. And then we meet Leo. I'm not just a sausage king, I'm a realist. Ben's dad. He's a sausage king. Of what? I don't know. He's just the king of sausage. Played by Steve Shrippa from The Sopranos. All my Sopranos fans, make some noise. That's all that happens in episode three. It's kind of boring. Episode four begins with Ricky shirtless. <laughs> this is kind of a big deal because for the rest of the show, nobody is ever nude in like any way, shape, or form. Even after people hook up, they like are getting out of bed fully clothed. So this is very strange. But Ricky is at Adrian's house. He gets out of bed shirtless. When he gets a call from Grace, her ride fell through. So she needs a ride right now. As um, Ricky is driving to go save Grace, some big bad men start 
making their way towards Grace and being like, I'm going to get you. When she sees the men approaching her, she starts praying that they'll leave her alone. Grace smashes a bottle. She's like, stay back, stay back. Ricky goes up. He still has no shirt on. Gets out of the car and punches the guy, saves Grace. Not only that, but the security camera caught all the footage. Of course, this makes um, local news. Or national news, who knows? Guards at the neighborhood bank were surprised to find this bit of footage this morning. I bet a lot of people are going to be surprised. Including that guy's wife, probably. What do you think is the backstory here? Well, no one's identified her yet, but if we run this a few more times, I'm sure someone will. Obviously, we have the high school. All we need is the yearbook. Try that. She must be a freshman. I wonder what church she goes to. I wonder what church he goes to. Look at him! <laughs> Makes me want to go back to high school again. When did you get out of high school? Last year? The next morning, George is, like, standing above Amy's bed, like, really close to her face, and being like, guess who's on the news? Get up! Come on, you gotta see this. They're gonna talk about it at school all day. I guarantee it. Okay. Hurry. They're on the news. They're the talk of the town. Grace officially is like, Jack, we're done. Jack is now back to hooking up with Adrian. So he's at Adrian's house, and this is the first time we meet Cindy, Adrian's mom. Adrian lives with her mother. As you can see, her dad's blocked out. He's not here yet, but... For now, she's a single mother. They live in an apartment. She is a flight attendant, so she's almost never home. And what we also know about her is that she has a lot of men over. Ben is at Amy's house to take her on a date. He's talking to George. Vegetarians, hey, hate them. Earth Day? Please. Here's one. Al Gore. Oh, come to Papa. <laughs> and that's all that really happens that episode. Ricky and Grace now have a line. Kathleen and George have a line because they were previously married. Episode 5. We get an iconic scene. Ben is taking Amy on a date to the park. Amy is very pregnant at this point, and Ben is like fully committed to being the father of her baby and staying committed to her. This is the first mention of Amy being obsessed with wings, like chicken wings. Ben pulls out a giant fucking plate of wings, like the most massive plate of wings. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, man, these look really good. <laughs> Then proposes to her, says he wants to marry her. They're both 15. We get the iconic line. I'm such a whore. Well, <laughs> you're my whore. Episode 6, Anne finds out Amy is pregnant. And we see the first whisperings of Anne and George having marital issues. Episode 7. Now everyone knows that Amy is pregnant and Ricky is the father. So it's spreading around school and everyone's putting their opinion in on what Amy should do with her fetus. If she should abort it, keep it, give it up for adoption, etc. Now, we have two very separate camps here telling Amy what to do. So, Grace, Madison, Ben are all anti-abortion. Adrian, Lauren, and Ricky, they're all pro-abortion. Okay? Get rid of the thing. Amy's like, okay. I'm going to go get the abortion. She shows up to the Planned Parenthood. Everyone follows her there, and they're all fighting in the lobby. Jesus is my counselor. You two drove her here. You're accessories to a crime. Tell her the truth, you coward. You don't care about Amy or that baby. You don't care if Amy has an abortion. Yes, he does, and so do I, and so does God. Oh, honey, they do not take a vote on these things. I'm not with these guys, I swear. Amy ends up not getting the abortion. She goes home to start looking to adopt the baby to a family. We also find out this episode that George, my king, is sleeping with Cindy. So this is why Anne and George were fighting, because George is cheating on Anne with Cindy. At this point, on at episode seven, George has already slept with every single mom in the show. How does it feel to live my dream? Ah! This is a state of affairs at the end of episode seven. Take a look. Episode 8, we meet the legend that is Mimsy. 
and a baby is very tiny. Mimsy is Anne's mother. She is a sleigh. Mimsy is coming to visit because the thought is that maybe Amy should go stay with her while she's pregnant and then come back after the baby is born. When Mimsy gets there, she starts saying things that are a little bit kooky. Amy, the baby can stay in here for the first year or two. And then after that, we'll find something bigger, like a dresser drawer. Mimsy is in her dementia arc. She's still a sleigh, though. Adrian doesn't know who her dad is, and her mom won't tell her. So she's going to start looking for her dad. She goes to slay Joe, and she's like, I need you to get me my permanent record. Also, I haven't been putting anyone in jail. Jack can still be in jail. Madison and Lauren have decided that they are both in love with Ricky. Madison and Lauren are fighting with each other over who gets to go for Ricky, which you would think should be out of the question because their best friend is pregnant with his baby, but nope, whatever. We also this episode meet George's gay coworker. <laughs> and we're married, happily married, 10 years. <laughs> I didn't know that. Is that legal? This show has a weird relationship with gay people, which becomes very obvious uh, closer to season four and five. However, his employee is named Leon, and he's a gay man uh, who wants to adopt Amy's baby. Episode nine is perhaps the best episode of the series just because of whose character gets introduced. Tom is like, I'm really lonely. I need a friend. So Tom goes on the internet and searches up companion, looking for a companion. <laughs> he uh, accidentally orders a online prostitute off Craigslist. Now hold on guys, because who is this online companion other than, drum roll please, Jennifer Coolidge's Betty, the best character in the fucking show. Hi. Well, hi yourself. Are you Tom? Are you Betty? <laughs> yeah, I'm Betty. You know, it's, it's gonna cost you money if you want me to be your friend, but... Words to describe Betty, iconic, slay legend mom. I love her. I hope I live long enough to die of lung cancer. What happened is Jennifer Coolidge came to play this character once, and they loved her so much they said we need to get her back, so she will be coming back. But at this point, she is just friends with Tom. He pays her, and they just like play board games or something. If you don't pay me the money, a very mean guy is going to come and beat you up with a bag of oranges that he keeps in his trunk. While all this is going on, Lauren and Madison were playing Who Gets a Day with Ricky. Lauren's won. And Lauren is currently kissing Ricky <laughs> in the car. And for that, I'm going to put Lauren in jail. Kissing your best friend's baby daddy behind her back is not cool. In episode 10, not much is happening. However, Ben is getting bullied because he's dating a pregnant girl. Maybe you should go to slut school. Pitfalls of the job. Ben gets beat up. <laughs> ben, ben just gets the shit beaten out of him at school. I told you, it's alternative extension school for independent women. It's slut so, 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 so school. Say it. <laughs> alternative <laughs> extension school for independent women. It's slut school. Your girlfriend is a slut. Just say it. She should be at slut school. Grace is like, stop. Don't bully. Bullying's not cool. God doesn't love you. Ben? Oh my gosh, are you okay? Don't tell Amy. Uh. Uh. Help! Somebody help! <sighs> Episode 11, we get another really iconic scene. Ricky in the hallway. Who does he run into but Sean Johnson, Olympian? She canonically goes to their school and she plays herself. Hey, Sean. Hey. Hey. I haven't seen you around. Where have you been? Where have I been? Yeah. When'd you get an attitude? I don't have an attitude. Great. So maybe we can go out sometime? I don't know. I'm kind of busy. Doing what? Come on. All right. Call me. the high school and who do I see as soon as I walk in the door? Sean Johnson doing backflips. This is when we meet Reuben, Adrian's dad. Adrian's found her dad via her 
permanent record. <laughs> and his name is Ruben. He's the district attorney of wherever they live. So he's a big lawyer man. They have a tumultuous relationship now because she's mad that he has abandoned her. So Ruben is back in Adrian's life. He comes to school to see her. So she steals his car and drives away. I should have mentioned this before, but this school consists of one hallway that has a guidance counselor's office off of it. And that's almost all we see of the school ever. So he's in the guidance counselor's office calling all his cop friends because <laughs> because he's the big bad attorney who prosecutes people. Truancy. Sorry, I forgot my pen. Don Rumsfeld gave me this pen. Truancy. If you remember, Ben's proposed to Amy. So of course, um, they want to get crack in on this wedding before the baby comes. Episode 12, they're preparing for a wedding. They realize that to get married, they're gonna need IDs. They commission Joe, my Slay King, to make them all fake IDs. And I'm talking everybody. They all get fake IDs, and they're all from Nevada. Joe is running some operation in a room at the high school where he has the big thing set up, is taking their pictures, making them fake IDs. I just want to make sure you're not telling anybody. I'm selling fake IDs, and I'm going to tell someone. Yeah, I want to get arrested. They're all getting ready for the wedding. Amy is wearing a horrific outfit to her own wedding. It's nothing, it's not cute, you stupid idiot, okay? In episode 13, this is the continuation of the wedding. So the wedding's been completed. Little do they know it's not valid. They're all partying in the hotel after the wedding. Leo and George come to the door and they say, hey guys, by the way, you're not actually married. Everything falls apart. The police come and they're like wanting to arrest Joe for making all these fake IDs. That's not really that slay. Being the good Christian he is, because Jack was involved, he decides that he is uh, going to take the fall for the ID crisis. He collects all the IDs, cuts them up, and presents them to the police officer and says, I made the IDs, not Joe. I think it's because they were going to arrest Joe because he's had multiple ID charges. Uh-oh. Arrest you right now for running a shop and making illegal IDs, which carries a penalty of up to six months in jail. You want to go to jail? Not really. I've, I've heard it's really bad there. Yeah, I'm responsible for them. I was the driver. I drove Ben and Amy to the wedding. The DA's office would like a word with you. Why would Jack do that? Why would he take the blame for you? I inspire loyalty. Or you just know way too much. Or he's just stupid. Or maybe he did it. Episode 14. <laughs> Jack's dad, the pastor, comes to speak to Amy's family about why adoption is great and about how he can help them get a good Christian family to adopt the baby. They're all like, wow, this sounds really cool and great. So Anne decides she's going to start working with Jack's dad, the pastor, to find a family. George says, um, I don't need that Christian shit. I can find a family on my own. And he's going to try to find a family to adopt the baby by himself separate from the church slay ricky and ben want amy to keep the baby and not give it up for adoption but amy wants to give the baby up for adoption i love this baby in episode 15 we have jack doing community service for his naughty naughty crimes jack is now tutoring a boy who lives in the bad part of town <laughs> Mad dog to deal with. Just drive away. Jack is about to go to jail again. And he ends up getting robbed like multiple times, like pushed to the ground and robbed. And his car gets stolen because that's what happens when you're in the bad neighborhood, apparently. <laughs> Jack is now in jail for acting a fool. It's just so stupid. He, he develops a crush on the boy he's tutoring, his older sister. Jack's in jail because he's dating a 25 year old or something. She should be in jail, but she's not on the wall. We find out that Amy's baby is a boy. She's making a video to give the baby when it's born that he can watch when he's older. I'm your mother, your birth mother. And uh, this is your grandmother, the mother of your birth mother, my mother. I love you. My mother loves you. Make sure that you get all that life has to offer. 
That's what my parents did for me. You're my son. Fucking little telltale rat! Episode 16 is crazy. So Reuben has his own family. He has a wife, and his wife has a son from a previous marriage. To get back at her dad, Adrian starts sleeping with her stepbrother. You're not gay, are you? So if a guy doesn't want to have sex with you, he's gay? Well, that's one of the signs. What's the other? Flowers. <laughs> I'm not gay. Like, they didn't grow up with each other. They didn't know each other until like they were 17 or whatever but the issue is every time without fail she will say yeah i'm having sex with my brother i don't know who made that choice but she constantly says it she says it over and over <laughs> multiple times i'm thinking about having sex with my brother i'm not gonna have sex with my own sister He'll call. Your brother? He'll call. And then we have George meeting up with Leon and his husband, who are trying to adopt Amy's baby. And we get one of the most iconic lines of the whole series. George is being wined and dined by Leon and his gay husband, and they're all doing gay shit. You gays. You do like boxing, right? Marry me? <laughs> George is so impressed, he says, Happy to be here. You queens live like kings. <laughs> That was really funny. <laughs> Episode 17, Ben and Amy break up. Nothing more to say about that. They're just so boring. Anne is meeting with a family from the church to see if they should adopt Amy's baby. George, because he wants the baby to go to Leon and the gay husband, sabotages the whole visit. I find this an act of radical acceptance of gay rights. Ricky is now trying to get with Amy because... He wants to raise the baby with her. I have a note here that says Tammy is introduced here, but I swear she was introduced earlier. Editing Hannah here, I definitely was wrong and Tammy was not introduced until this episode. So I'm just gonna introduce her now and I cut out the part earlier where I introduced her, but Tammy is Tom's girlfriend. She, hi, I was right actually. Tammy was in previous episodes but she didn't have any lines until this episode so she wasn't listed in the credits on imdb until this episode so i'm just going to introduce her now tammy is tom's girlfriend and their relationship kind of runs parallel to the other relationships in the show where they go back and forth between one of them wanting to have sex one of them wanting to wait until marriage that kind of thing they're often used as the more lighthearted, like comic relief couple in the show where everyone else is taking everything super seriously and they're always doing something funny. Also, Tammy is an absolute legend. She slays the house boots mama and she hates Grace for absolutely no reason, which is just really fucking funny. Tammy is here and she really wants to bang Tom. Oh, hi, Tammy. Hi, mom. Do you mind if I call you that? Because Tom and I are getting married one day. What exactly has made you so hungry? We've been swimming in the hot tub. Okay, you're the boss. You got that right. <sighs> Episode 18. Come on! Thank God for foreclosures, huh? Wasn't a foreclosure yet. That's why I got such a good deal. And I love good deals. <laughs> Be kind, George. You know those people. Never liked them. But basically, I just saved their butts. They were always throwing their money away. Going back to college at their age. Those two nickel poops, they were never gonna finish college. Patrons keeps talking about Ben and her brother. Ben and Amy, they were apart for one episode. They're now back together. So just jot that one down. Episode 19 is perhaps another one of the most important episodes, in my opinion, because Anne and Amy decide they need to find jobs because they both need insurance because Anne is divorcing George. They go to get jobs at a hot dog place. Now hold on, because who who runs this hot dog place? None other than my boy, Nicholas Braun from HBO's Succession and Sky High and everything else. If there's one thing you need to know about me, besides that I am a secret life stan, it's that I'm a succession stan to my core. So Nick Braun, and probably his best role ever, he's interviewing 
and flirting with her. He loves MILFs. I love hot dogs. Oh, I see your potential. I plan on going back to school, but with this economy, it's really hard to find part-time work. So I figure this is as good a place as any to start. I'll work really hard, and I'm totally flexible with my hours. Flexible, huh? Husband leave you? I wish. How old are you? You can't ask me that. You brought up the personal stuff, divorce and all that. How old are you? It's not a job interview question. It's a personal question. Me to you, man to all man. Then I'm 29. I've been out with women over 29. Natural redhead? What? Your hair, you put something on it? No. All right, then. You're hired. Daughter, huh? Sold. Yeah, man, minimum wage for the both of you. Cool. Acabo de contratar esta vieja. Su esposo la dejó. No tiene dinero. Ella y su hija vienen a trabajar aquí. Pero no les digas que ganas 10 dólares la hora. Ok, tiene seguro. Sí. It's really iconic, and I love this scene. I've been trying to contact you, Nick, about this scene on Instagram DMs. Please answer me. Slay what you want to slay, and let the slay slow. Amy and Anne start working at the hot dog place. While they're there, Anne meets a man with ramen noodle hair who is an architect. And you can tell he's an architect because he carries around giant blueprints with him everywhere. Hi. And they're flirting, so that's really cool. In episode 20, Ricky and Ben also get jobs because they are trying to support Amy's baby. They get a job at Sausage King Leo's Sausage Shop. And they have a boss named Bonnie, who seems like a lesbian, but she's not. But she really, really seems like one, but she's canonically not. And after meeting this architect, they have flirty vibes, starts working for him as a secretary, and then they start having sex, so she's fucking her boss. Basically, everyone's got a job now so that they can support Amy's baby so she can keep the baby. That's the whole idea. Episode 21, George and Anne are officially separated and George is moving out of the house and he's gonna take Ashley with him because Ashley wants to live with George instead of Anne. Then they throw a baby shower. Grace and Jack are back together and Adrian is also sleeping with her stepbrother right before the baby shower, which is being thrown at her house. Obviously, I don't wanna go to military school. I have to cut my hair. Are you the slut that had oral sex with Jack and broke him up with his girlfriend? Oh, no, 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 um, this is the slot's condo, but I'm just answering the door. <laughs> Amy doesn't even make it to her own baby shower, because as she's climbing the stairs to the apartment, she goes into labor. Also, Tammy is there. She was brought by Kathleen, and she has some really good lines. I want to hit that lady. Your sister is such a buzzkill. I just want some sleep. Episode 22, Amy in labor, and also flashbacks to band camp, which show how she got pregnant in the first place. Every time there's flashbacks, there's like an echoey voice for Amy's thoughts, and that severely bothers my girlfriend, and I think that's funny. Did he just kiss me and also i wrote amy is on her dumb bitch shit because now that she's in labor she's just being such a bleep she's just so rude to everybody no it's not gonna be okay i'm starving <laughs> are you actually going to sit there and tell me stories about my mother when you could be doing something to make your daughter the girl that she gave birth to feel better oh, dear god we'll get you a frip just stop with all the drama oh. episode 23 last episode of the season amy's baby is born Amy's going in jail for acting a fool while she's giving birth. Sorry, Amy. She's the most insufferable character. Amy gives birth, and her and Ashley are talking about what they should name the baby. And Ashley says, what about John? Yeah, go with John. You need a nice, clean, simple name. That kid's life will be complicated enough. John, uh, John F. Kennedy. John Kennedy Jr. <laughs> John Quincy Adams. Pope John Paul. John Lennon. Uh, John Cougar Mellencamp. John Deere. So now the baby's name is John. Which is fine. But what the fuck? Your baby comes out, you're gonna name it John as a teen mother? Please. In the 2000s? 
George and Ashley are going to move out, and George is, like, doing his little dance. Um, they back out of the driveway and pull into the house next door. So he's bought the house next door. So they did move out, but now Anne and Amy live in their house, and George and Ashley live just right next door. <laughs> Howdy, neighbor! What the house next door? So that's the end of season one. It was a ride, wasn't it? Season one recap. All of these lines are from season one. Amy is in jail at the end because she acted a fool and then agreed to name her baby John, which is also a jail offense. Overall, my favorite moments were the introduction of Betty, when Ben proposed to Amy and then called her a whore, Ricky shirtlessly saving Grace, Mimsy and her dementia, and George existing and hooking up with every MILF in the show. In the grand scheme of things, this season has more plot than probably any other season. Amy's pregnant, that's the story. You may be thinking, like, where could they even go after Amy is um, done being pregnant? Well, what a good question. I'll tell you, they find a new person to get pregnant every season. <laughs> As it stands, relationship-wise, George and Anne are separated. Amy is with Ben. Ricky is with nobody, although he has hooked up with everybody on the board. You know, Adrian and Ricky are probably still hooking up. They're always off and on. Moving right along to season two. So now I'm focused on being a surgeon as a way to not think about not being a virgin. I forgot my season two apparel. For season two, we're wearing our MILF hunter hat because let me tell you, the MILFs are out to play this season. Season two, episode one begins with George and Mimsy in George's kitchen. They're hanging out like besties, discussing whether or not Anne, Mimsy's daughter and George's ex-wife, is pregnant or just fat. Poor Anne. Well, she's either pregnant or she's fat. And she was never this fat when she was pregnant. Right, right, okay. It was right after World War II. Fred and I were in such high spirits. The whole world was. Well, except for maybe Germany. Now, remember, Anne is currently with the architect. George and Mimsy think she's pregnant. They also are commenting on the size of her knockers, which they say are huge. He actually says the word stacked. Now, what makes you think she's pregnant and not just fat? She's stacked. She's always been stacked. Yeah, she takes after me, and the, except that I'm thinner, of course. <sighs> That's a great word. On the other side of things, uh, we do find out that Anne is indeed pregnant. Amy sniffs her out. Let's put George in jail for calling Anne fat. <laughs> I hate to admit when he's wrong, but he, he was wrong for that one. Anne is pregnant. It is a common known fact that George and Anne slept together shortly before she met the architect. So there is a possibility that it is George's baby. More on that later. At the beginning of the episode, Ben is talking to Henry and Alice about his dad's new girlfriend. And he says, she's just not the type that should be a stepmom. Like, she, I just don't want her dating my dad. Later, George and Ashley show up to the only restaurant in town. I know this because it's the only restaurant that's ever in the show. Besides the hot dog restaurant that Nick Braun works at, which never comes up again. George and Ashley go there, and they run into Leo eating dinner with his new girlfriend, Betty. I got instead of Grace with? Roger, uh, Amy's sister and that. Pleased to meet you. I heard all about your little Amy. How is the baby? Huh? The baby is fine. John. John? What John? The baby. His name's John. Oh, right. I knew that. <laughs> this is revolutionary. Every time Betty's on screen, I go nuts. She's got big boobies. Lord, have mercy. We must stay focused, brothers. We must stay focused. Jennifer Coolidge? I'm so sorry. Betty is now a recurring character because she's with Leo. They're very cute together. On the other side of town, Grace and Jack, their relationship is getting pretty hot and heated, and Grace thinks that she is ready to have sex. She's very mad at her parents because they keep telling her she shouldn't have sex because she's not ready. She goes to Jack and she's like, okay, I'm ready to lose my virginity now. Grace's dad, who she just got in a fight with on the phone, Marshall, is getting on an airplane to go to Zimbabwe because... He works there as a doctor sometimes. Kathleen and Tom are in the car driving Marshall to the airport. George is confronting Anne about being pregnant and saying, it's my baby, it's my baby. And she's like, no, it's not. You got a vasectomy. And he goes, oh, right. It's a very confusing as if he did actually get the vasectomy or not. Grace and Jack have sex, and Grace says it was fantastic. She loved it. 
Right. <laughs> well, as soon as we're of legal age, let's get married. Because I would love to marry a woman who loves sex as much. Kathleen <laughs> and Tom return home, sobbing, crying. I don't know how else to say this. Marshall's dead. Can I please get some funeral music? His airplane to Zimbabwe has crashed. And he is now dead. Ooh! <laughs> he was on a private airplane with like four other doctors and it crashed. Do you kill him? In episode two, Grace is dealing with the fact that the last words she said to him were rude because they were in a fight. Takes it to mean that she killed her father because she had sex. Do you kill him? That's what she thinks happened because God's unhappy with her. So she had sex and and that's why her dad's plane crashed. Grace is going to jail for this because this sets off the most insufferable series of episodes I have ever watched in my life. Every episode is the same. My boy sex and my dad is dead because of me. I killed my own father. We both got what we deserved. You had sex and you got pregnant. I had sex and I killed my father. I was punished more than you were, though, I guess, because I knew better than you did. So God took him away because of me. He didn't die because you and I had sex. Because he did. If I hadn't had sex, then he would still be alive. He didn't do this to this family. I did. There is a reason. It didn't just happen. It's not a mystery. I had sex and now dad is dead. And he had a horrible death because I had incredible sex. But we didn't kill your father. Yes, we did. If I hadn't had sex, and if I hadn't enjoyed having sex so much, then Dad would still be alive, and you know it, Mom. Obviously, you're okay with your son having sex because you're still alive. But my dad, my daddy, he didn't want me to have sex, and I did have sex. And it was fun. It was sinfully fun. It was the most fun I've ever had in my whole life. And that's why it was wrong. It was so wrong that it killed him. Religion is poisonous. At the same time, Leo's proposing to Betty. It's an engagement ring, you know. I don't care what it is. Engagement ring, friendship ring, and a ring ring. Hello? <laughs> they show up to pick up Ben, who is at Amy's house taking care of John, and John pisses on Ben, which gives uh, John some big icon points because it was funny and I hate Ben. Slay what you want to slay and let the slay slow. Season 2, episode 3, we have... Ben and Betty in a car going to Marshall's funeral. She thinks he doesn't know that she was a sex worker, but um, he does, in fact, know this. Ben gets out of the car. Betty waves to Tom like they're friends, and Ben is very confused because he doesn't know how Tom knows his sex worker stepmother. <laughs> Ricky looks really, really good this episode. Please. That's all I'm going to say about that. At the end of the funeral, they have a golf cart parade and then spread his ashes on the golf course. I don't think you're allowed to do that. I played golf in high school, so I would know. Episode four, Leo says... Ben, you can go to Bologna for the summer and just have some fun. You're too stressed out because you're raising a child that isn't yours. Bologna, Italy. Because they're Italian. Ben is like, wait, that sounds so slay. But as soon as Amy finds out, she's going to want to go. So I have to try to figure out a way to tell her. But also, I don't want her to go. George comes upon Grace on the sidewalk and has a weird talk with her in which he tells her that he didn't get a vasectomy. I just want to know where he is. He's dead, Grace. Well, I got news for you. Guys aren't animals. They're not completely ruled by their hormones. They're animals with brains. They can be trained to go without sex for long periods of time. Just ask any guy who's been married for a few years and has kids. <laughs> You're funny. All right. I told my wife I got a certain surgery when I didn't. Now she thinks she's pregnant by her boyfriend. That was just strange. That's like the only time those two interact. Betty comes into the butcher shop. This is the first time Betty is meeting Ricky, and Ricky is on flirt mode with Betty because she's a mill. Uh, this is my dad's fiance. Yeah, that's French for betrothed. I can't seem to keep any information in my head. I have to write everything down. <laughs> all right, Benjamin. No, I, I was just making a dumb blonde joke. Now that there's all this talk about Ben going to Bologna, there seems to be some sort of in joke about how Bologna is known for oral sex. Have you ever been to Bologna, Betty? Oh, yeah. Yeah, lots of times. It's beautiful, and uh, people are really, really friendly, and there's, there's spaghetti all over the place. Well, what's Bologna known for? Everyone knows what Bologna's known for. 
And this is an entire plot line. The architect proposes to Anne at the end of this episode and says that her being pregnant is a miracle because his sperm doesn't work. Anne takes this to mean that the baby is definitely George's, but she doesn't tell him this. <laughs> she just accepts Yay! his proposal. Episode five, Amy has found out about Bologna and decided she's going. Ben is like, hold on. I don't want Amy to come to Bologna with me. I'm trying to have oral sex and she won't have sex with me. Amy is going back in jail. So she's being really effing annoying. She's like just telling her parents she's leaving John with them for the summer because she's going to Italy and that's her right, even though she has a baby. I should add a line between Leo and Ricky. They've got total father-son vibes going on now. Ricky is looking to find a place of his own so he can spend more time with his son, John. Leo gifts Ricky the apartment a above the butcher shop. In episode six, not much happens, but George gets served divorce papers in the middle of traffic, which makes him upset. George? George Jurgen? The one and only. Do we know each other? You've been served. Have a nice day. Amy finds out her yearbook photo is her pregnant, and the photo is her, like, leaning against a pillar, like, breaking her back. Like, no pregnant woman would actually be able to stand like that. It's very funny. And she gets very upset and says she doesn't want to be remembered as the pregnant girl. How did this get in here? Also, the guidance counselor is gone. He's out of here. Episode 7 begins after summer break. Seeing John for the first time, he's fully a toddler now. It has, in fact, been one summer since he was born, and he looks like this now. Ooh! What? I wrote something. I said somebody breaks a window for no reason. I'll insert whoever it was. It was for no reason, though. Sad. Hey. Yeah. Sorry, Mom. Ashley, walking into school, she looks hot, hot, sexy, hot, and she's got the music from Ferris Bueller, the... Yeah. That music, and she's walking, and all the boys want her. She meets Griffin. We're going to pretend Grant's not there for now, because he's not introduced yet. <laughs> Griffin is her first friend, and we learn that Griffin is gay. As long as you're not going to try to have sex with me. I'm not going to try to have sex with you. I'm gay, okay? Grace over the summer went to medical camp. She's gotten back. She learned in medical camp that the only way to connect with people is to touch them on the shoulder. Oh, you're still here. What? I hate the way you talk to me. Really, Tammy? How's that? Get your hand off me. So it helps to call them by their name, put your hand on them, and look them right in the eye. You're not a doctor. Fine, Ricky. And how are you? I mean that. How are you? Grace? <gasps> are you doing okay? Whoa. Well, oh. Bye. Jack goes to his football coach and says, hey, what happens if I get hit too hard in the junk? Will that mean that I can't have kids in the future because my sperm is dead? Do you really think I'd be coaching high school football if I thought for one minute that one of my players might get a groin injury and will never be able to have children. Last year, Lucky Chucky dropped out because of a groin injury. Yeah, Lucky Chucky wasn't so lucky. Remember, Ben is back from Bologna, and Amy is very suspicious that he's cheated on her. It's heavily implied that he has. Amy Jurgens, you're the most beautiful, most frustrating woman on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Amy and Ben meet in a classroom and talk. He shows her pictures, and there's girls in the pictures, and she's like, who is that? I went with her and her girlfriend. They wanted to show me some things before I left. Girlfriend, girlfriend, or girlfriend? They're not gay. Huh. Neither am I. And... I'm not either, but... What? But Amy's being sussy. In episode eight, Amy is just trying to figure out if Ben cheated on her. George and Anne have committed to making it work. George is going to move back into the house, and at the same time, Reuben and Cindy are getting back together here. And they need a house. So George is like, hey, I know a house. Adrian, Reuben, and Cindy are going to move into the house next door to George, Anne, Amy, John and Ashley. Problematic because Amy really dislikes Adrian because Ricky's her baby daddy. I don't just think you're a slut, Adrian. You are a slut. Slut. Ladies. How can I be friends with Amy when she called me a no good lying, cheating, two-bit, low-class whore? Episode 9. Tom 
in an effort of retaliation, throws a football directly at Jack's dick. Dig fast. Groin injury! Then, gets a postcard from Italy. Hmm, that's suspicious. Who could that be from? Turns out it's from a girl he spent time with there. Betty has some good lines. The cloth towels are so classy. Hey, Betty. Leo. Hi. <laughs> We're regulars. I've never been regular. It makes me feel so special. You are special. And you're special, too. <laughs> and you're a special kid. Thanks, Betty. Ben, did you want to tell me that I'm special? Oh, of course. Um... And you're a very special stepmother. I don't like labels. I know. How about you call me Betty? Anne is having a boy. So that's nice. In episode 10, we have Grace giving a, an abstinence slam poem at the church. This is a work of art. I'm sorry, Jesus, but I had sex. I don't know what happened. It's so complex. I promised I would wait until I was wed. And then despite that promise, I ended up in bed. I never thought anything could feel so good. I thought maybe wives just do it because they think they should. But after all was said and done, I did feel guilty for having so much fun. So now I'm focused on being a surgeon as a way to not think about not being a virgin. I wanted to open with a joke, but when I Googled Christian jokes on sex, I couldn't find anything. <laughs> You're not funny. Boo! We also are introduced to Moose. George's dog. George got Moose from someone selling service dogs that failed the test. All he knows how to do is call 911, and he does it over and over again. Moose, call 911. 911, what's your emergency? George, he called 911. Moose, I'm calling 911. Which will become important later. <laughs> So that's really slay. We also get some cami action in this episode. If they ran out and played in traffic, would you? Would it feel good? Yes. Tom? What might be funny? You. In episode 11, Betty is selling all of her things at a garage sale because she's moving in with Leo and Ben. Wow. Thank you. And, and don't forget to wear protection. Wow. Ricky pulls up in his car and Jennifer Coolidge pulls out a tiny guitar. Hey. There's that nice boy you work with, Ricky. Ricky. It's awesome. This is a Betty Heavy episode, which we always love to see. Menace Kathleen, whose husband died 10 episodes ago. Her husband died, right? It's been one summer. It's only been a few months. Walks into the house with who? You guessed it, Jeff. Kathleen has a new man's, and you'll never believe how her and Jeff met. Jeff is the brother of another doctor that was on the same plane crash that killed Marshall. Did it? You killed my dad? No, that was my brother. It was an accident, Tom. Mechanical failure. You know that. Um, Jeff and I met at the attorney's office when the insurance company was trying to reach a settlement. Yeah, I'm really sorry about your dad, Tom. Yeah, sorry about Jeff is also a doctor. He's actually a gynecologist, so that's fun. In episode 12, this very awkward scene of Amy's refusing to have sex with Ben because Amy's on some abstinence kink. Kink? Kick? George is like, you need to make Amy feel like she's sexy. Like you want to have sex with her, even if you don't. When women don't want to have sex, they still want you to want to have sex. So want to have sex, but don't. Got it. You may also notice that I haven't been giving Amy any time. It's because I hate her. I'm going to put Kathleen in jail for dating her dead husband's friend's little brother right after he died. Adrian and Ricky are at couples therapy. I'm having a hard time at this point keeping track of who's with who. Anne has her baby. She goes into labor at home, and they try to call an ambulance. However... Guess who called the ambulance way too many times? Moose. I have a slight problem. Evidently, 911 says we've cried wolf too many times. George! So therefore, George has to deliver the baby on his own. And he does so. And they name it Robbie. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. 
Yeah. So there's Robbie. Ashley, upset that her house is now overcrowded, gets her own room in the garage. Griffin comes over and says, Ashley, I'm gay. I can help you decorate. I'm really good at decorating. And then he explains the most horrendous design I've ever heard of. To really illustrate the monstrosity that is this design that's about to come out of Griffin's mouth, I'm using this blank room on Procreate to follow along with his conceptual design. Obviously, I can't see within his inner world. However, this is what his design would look like based on the information he's given us. Okay, we need paint, black paint. I'm thinking stripes. Now bear with me here. We need tape, painter's tape, some drop cloths. We could stain the cement, do some carpet squares, put some small chandeliers here and there as a contrast of low end, high end. I'm thinking Jacquinet mixed with some Dorothy Draper, you know, masculine, feminine mix of some sort. That's why your shoes raggedy. That's why your mama did. She is very gorgeous to me! We also get some Betty this episode. If the sex isn't good, we gotta face the music. Is any sex not good? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Episode 13. They're all skipping school. They all cut out early and go to the beach. We don't know. You tell us. I can tell you. Ricky, Jack, and Ben have all left the building and uh, they're following them. Also, I should mention the new guidance counselor is none other than, from the Big Bang Theory, Amy Farrah Fowler. Miss Bink? Dr. Bink. Doctor, huh? PhD? That's still a doctor. What do you want, punk? A little respect. Earn it. You were fired from your last job for having sex with a student. You received your PhD for the internet. And your husband left you for another guy. One, the other guy was his cousin. Two, there are some excellent schools on the internet. And three, the student to whom you are referring was 18 before we went to the prom, and we did it as a political statement, and there was no sex involved, I just like to dance. What's your point? While they're all at the beach, you'll never believe this, who shows up? Maria, Ben's summer fling from Italy. Hey, Ben! hell is my Mercedes? Apparently, Ben told Maria while he was there, I like to go to this beach, come and find me when I come back. The thing about Maria, she's supposed to be Italian. However, she only speaks in a weird mix of Spanish and it, it, she speaks no Italian. It's mostly Spanish. We have to stop. Stop? What is this word stop? Uh, alto, alto. No alto, go, go, go. What's the matter, Benito? You don't want to make love to me tonight? Episode 14. We get some really good Maria content. Benito, you found me! <laughs> Maria, I did. <laughs> you can if you want. Oh, trust me, part of me wants. I bet I know it. Mm -hmm. This is America. In America, you can do anything. You can be anyone. Let's be lovers. Sausage King of America! <gasps> I, I didn't realize you were here, Ben. Uh... That's because I hide in the closet because Ben, he is nervous that he is caught by Amy who has had a baby with another man. Ridiculous, no? Ricky has cheated on Adrian because he's having a mental crisis of some sort. Episode 15, Adrian finds out about this and throws her phone through the butcher shop window. Adrian threw a rock through the window? A cell phone as she shouted, chupacabra. What? It's a devil dog, goat sucker. You've been sucking goats? Jack and Madison have been hooking up. And Jack is trying to get her to have sex with him. Jack's going back in jail because he keeps trying to pressure women to have sex with him. We don't like that, Jack. We don't like that at all. There's this great scene of Madison and Jack dancing. I didn't know I had company. You want to dance? Dance, dance? Is that like the code for oral sex? Dance, dance. Okay, I'm nice well. <laughs> episode 16 is <laughs> the masturbation episode. I need a drink, bro. In this episode, titled Just Say Me, 
the girls discover masturbating. Grace is like, I really like having sex, but I don't like boys because Jack is uh, in jail, of course. Kathleen says, well, why don't you masturbate? She teaches her about it, and Grace goes and tells all the rest of the gals that they need to do something called Just Say Me. What's going on? Uh, nothing. Grace thinks she's invented something. I didn't say that. No, she didn't say that at all. I just don't agree with it. Have you ever tried it? Of course I've tried it. Well, maybe you should try it again. Why didn't anyone tell me about this before, man camp? Why would someone have to tell you about it? What? Okay, but it's the only kind of sex you can have anytime you want without any fear of getting an STD or pregnant or getting involved with a guy you don't want to get involved with. Masturbation. I hate that word. <laughs> really, Dr. Bowman? It's just a word. We need a new word, a nicer way of saying it, because the M word is just, I don't know, I can't recommend it and use that word. And believe me, I recommend it. Oh, we believe you. So what do you guys think about just say me as a kind of code for the M word? Kind of a campaign amongst all us girls. As a substitute for sex, not a substitute for a relationship. Don't you like it? Just say me. Compared to just say no, it's so much more positive and practical. Not so much in all the other benefits, too. I mean, studies show that it lowers blood pressure, aids sleep, promotes relaxation. I mean, really, I don't see a problem when used in moderation. Starts this whole campaign called Just Say Me, and they have buttons, signs, t-shirts, posters, everything. When you buy two Just Say Me t-shirts, you will get one absolutely free. And we'll also throw in the Just Say Me refrigerator magnet, the Just Say Me bumper sticker, and the Just Say Me diary. <gasps> There's also a scene in which they have a montage to Mr. Sandman. I have decided against my better judgment to record every song I think might get copyrighted with my microphone in Audacity. I hope you enjoy this, and I'm sorry. I also sped it up. Please forgive me. Sam -do 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 -do. I'm so alone. Do -do -do -do. Don't have nobody to call my own. Do -do -do -do. Please turn on your magic beams. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Mr. Sandman, yes. Bring us a dream. Bring us a pair of eyes with a come with me. Give us a lonely heart like Polly at Shady. And lots of baby hair like Liberace. Mr. Sandman, someone to hold. Do need some PG before we go. So please turn on your magic beam. Mr. Sandman, bring us. Please, 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 Mr. Sandman. Bring us a in episode 17, Griffin says, Ashley, you need to go on a date with my cousin Grant. He would really like you and you'd really like him. Grant shows up to go on a date with Ashley. Amy is also fully on her emo hair shit at this point, and for that, she's going to jail. Hey, so if you don't mind me asking, have you showered or bathed in the last couple of days? I also feel like I need to show you, there's this interview the cast did at one of the red carpets, and Shailene Woodley, I can't even explain it to you. It's really, really bad. Shay and I started a craft trailer in front of the journey and making uh, Halloween thing cards. So much fun. Her, uh, her trailer. Amy's going on a date with grocery store boy. She brings a condom just because. She drops it at some point, and the boy freaks out because he thinks she wants to have sex, and so he ghosts her. Ben and Grace are on a date. Both sides Italian and Catholic, yeah. I'm wasp all the way. <laughs> Why? We do get a little bit of Betty content this episode. Why don't you get away from me, you, you dirty bird? Episode 18, the man Amy went on a date with will not call her back because of the condom. And Amy is in distress about it and thinks it's because she's a bad kisser. So she asks Ricky to kiss her to see if she's a bad kisser. We're just friends. <laughs> Friends with a baby. Okay. <laughs> In episode 19, Mother Daughter Dance. The scenes at the dance are very funny. This also got claimed. I had it playing, I'd like to be the like slut coming up. Adrian finds out that Ricky has kissed Amy and she's really mad, so she says that she's gonna have sex with Ben to get back at him. So for that, she's going to jail because that's manipulative, Adrian. Ben and Adrian talk and decide that Ricky and Amy have, in fact, hooked up. They do hook up in Ben's car outside of Adrian's house. You some company? You know, I could. The beginning of episode 20 is 
the fallout of that. I didn't sleep with Amy. I haven't slept with Amy since band camp, and that was before I knew you. I kissed her. I only kissed her, and I only kissed her because she asked me to. Ask your dad. Betty, Ben walks into her doing a crossword. She's rude to him, and it's really funny. Can you think of a three-letter word for a guy that sleeps with his best friend's girlfriend? Because I have B E. And Grant is hiding in Ashley's closet, and George comes in and, like, busts open the closet, and he's like, are you gay? Hello, sir. I'm at fault for not speaking up when you thought I was gay. You sure you're not gay? Maybe you're just in the closet. Sir, I'm in a closet, not the closet. I'm not gay. In episode 21, we're, ear we're nearing the end of the season. George, this episode, has a bunch of scenes where he's wearing a red hat, and he looks really good. Ricky has decided that she, he's going to go find his mom and confront her about all the years she hasn't been there for him and also ask why she allowed him to be abused. And this is where we are introduced to Nora. She's played by Anne Ramsey. She's pretty famous, but I know her from Heart of Dixie. Do you guys remember that Slay show? Because I sure do. I love that show. I just rewatched it recently. Episode 22. Grace and Tom decide to take matters with Jeff into their own hands to tell them to get married, knowing that when they say that, they'll think it's crazy, and then they'll break up. But, in fact, they tell them to get married, so they do, right then and there. And then ev every girl is, like, trying to get her boy. So they're all walking in the hallway to girlfriend and posing and being sexy. Hey, hey, you, I don't like your girlfriend. girlfriend. No, no way, no way, think you need a new one. Hey, hey, you, you, I can be your girlfriend. Hey, hey, you, you, I don't think you like me. No way, no way, no, 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 no it's not a secret. Hey, hey, you, you, I can be your girlfriend. You guys are so delicious. You guys are so addictive. I can tell you like me too, and you know I'm right. And he's like, so whatever. You can do so much better. Amy is back on her bullshit. She's back in jail. In episode 23, Amy decides to take Ricky to court for custody. She is going to get all of her friends to say that Ricky's a terrible father and that he shouldn't have any custody. Amy just starts coercing her friends into taking videos of them saying Ricky shouldn't get custody, which like definitely isn't part of the evidence process, but what would I know? Because I'm supposed to be studying for evidence right now. But I'm doing this instead. Not the point. Ricky is an unstable person. I was really tired when I filmed this and I forgot to say that in the end Ricky got all of their friends to take back their statements and make new statements about how he's a good father as well which includes this clip of Joe. Uh, this is this is just a mediation so I'll wait my feet. Uh, well everybody knows Amy's done a great oh <laughs> great job with her son and uh, I mean look at her she, she's a mother and, and she, she looks like that you know I mean come on she, she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky, Ricky's not that bad either. I mean, you know, he should keep the he should keep the sun. I mean, just just for the weekends. And hey, Amy, that that makes it available, right? The mediation ended up giving them joint custody. Amy's just such a bitch. Episode twenty four. It's John's first birthday, but good thing is he's looked to the whole time. Betty and Leo get married. It's very camp. Slap. Madison sings at the wedding because she's actually a singer in real life. Uh, Tammy is there, so that's a sleigh. Mr. Tom! <laughs> but not her! This is the last episode of the season, and we've already gone through another pregnancy, so... What is there to do but make someone else pregnant? Adrian goes to the bathroom, takes a test, and finds out that she's pregnant with Ben's baby. When she comes out, she tells Ben it's negative. These girls are fertile, honey. First time sex, first time sex, baby, baby. Fertile. And she's geriatric, fertile as fuck. That's me. I'm Amy. There's Ben, my wonderful boyfriend and someday husband. Our children. John. 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 She married John. 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 John, 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 and our youngest daughter, John. That's a grand total of nineteen. John, my God, 
that is the end of season two. Also, the way I'm like looking at my viewfinder is through a mirror. End of season two, where are we at? Some of the highlights are that Kathleen is now a MILF. Her husband is sexy. Moose exists and he calls 911, which is nice. I like that. Oh, another high of the season is Maria. I just adore her. Lows of the season, Amy and her whole attitude. Ben is also on his annoying arc. Come on, you disease carrying skank. You know, I love you. May we begin season three. Because this season is Adrian's pregnancy season, I will be wearing this wig to signify that I am Adrian. Season three, episode one. Jack and Madison are going steady. Adrian keeps telling Ben she's not pregnant and she's like, no, I got, I have my period. My cat is trying to eat the milk on her hat. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Jack's parents are moving to Arizona, so he has to find somewhere to stay, like, immediately. And Leo and Betty are on their honeymoon. Season 3, episode 2, Amy gets an invite to a prestigious program in New York City at Juilliard for her French horn playing. ba ba da da ba 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 da da ba ba da ba ba da 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 you don't get it, do you? No. And everyone is like, you must go. This is such a big deal. Maybe people will quit talking about you. I went to New York once. It was great, but I got mugged. Can you bring me one of those snow globes? One with the Chrysler building? I have a collection. Your parents are letting you do that? You? Why is she so hesitant to do this and leave John behind when she just wanted to leave him behind to go to Italy? I don't know. Everyone's finding out that Adrian is pregnant. So flop on her for keeping it a secret. She didn't do a very good job. Episode three, Amy leaves. And that's about it. Hey, you know there's an app on your phone so you can map out where you are and where you need to get to? This season is pretty slow until the end. Episode four, Ben and Amy are once again together, except Amy's like going to New York. So whatever. Episode five, though, we get a really iconic moment in which we have a montage of Amy making her way around New York City set to MGMT's song. But every photo is just her using a map. You were a child crawling on your knees toward it. And then the next day, she tells the girl who comes to her room that she was lost all day, so she didn't make it to school. <laughs> You will soon see that this woman is an absolutely horrific actress, and I was wondering why. I did find out that this is Bristol Palin, Sarah Palin's daughter, in a guest appearance, so that explains it. I couldn't find the school. I was lost all day. Amy finds out through the other girls in her program that this program isn't just for good French horn players. It's actually for teen moms who play instruments. Everyone in this program. The program. It's for teen moms. So I didn't get here on my own. Of course you did. You're the world's greatest French horn player. And I'm Yo-Yo Ma. Jack, by the way, has moved into the guest house. The guest house, of course, being Kathleen's guest house. Him and Tom live there together because they're best bros. So him and Tom are hanging out and they find some brownies in the freezer. They eat them. Turns out uh, it's weed. Tom, I think we're high. I think these are marijuana brownies. Better not be. They were Marshall's brownies. No more, no further explanation on that one. And in episode six, Adrian's trying to decide if she wants an abortion or not. They go to Planned Parenthood, but then they don't go through with it. Ben shows up to like try to stop her and he, she's sitting outside, but he gets out of his car and sprints inside and then quickly turns around and comes back out. Oh my God, I'm too late. I'm too early. Betty is also going to go play golf. I'm going to go put on my skort. Your what? You know, a skort. It's a cross between uh, a skirt and a pair of shorts. It's like the perfect golf attire, and I look really cute in it. And anyone wearing that looks like a fucking dork. Ruben hates abortion. Cindy is the one who's driving Adrian to get it, and Ruben says, I don't know if I can be with you if you like abortion. 
Ashley babysitting John, and they're on the phone with Amy, so Amy can see the baby while she's away, and Ashley just hangs up. No, look at the computer, John. There you are, I can see you. No, 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 John, John, don't go away. He's fine. Bye. It was just really funny, it was so abrupt. Your son's a gay slur. Your son. In episode seven, Ricky's mom comes back. She's like, hey, bestie, I'm back. I'm out of jail. Uh, she just got caught for another crime, so she has to go back to jail. Whop. Uh, I carry a gun. Ben flies out to New York on his dad's private plane to tell Amy about Adrian's baby, which effectively ends their relationship. Amy, Adrian's pregnant and it's my baby. Amy decides that maybe she should give it a try with Ricky. But while she's in New York, Ricky and Ashley kiss. I wish I'd never kissed him. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. And who's to blame her because me too. Yo, Triller, my thing's flipped. So, I gotta add that. No intimate contact. It's not just smart, it's the law. My hot take about this is that they're a fantastic couple. I love the idea of them together. Ben and Adrian are deciding to work it out, so they're back together too. Jesus, fuck. Episode 8, Adrian and Ben go to check on the baby, and Adrian has a hot doctor, a hot gynecologist, and Ben gets really jealous. Yeah, I'm, I'm still hung up on the whole male doctor thing. Grow up. For that, he's going to jail. We also get a scene of Madison, Jack, and Grace dancing. Like me. Why do they dance so much? I don't know. Episode 9, Grace has found a man who looks like Trixie Mattel out of drag, and she is trying to go on a date with him, but it turns out he's gay. He ends up getting with Griffin. I see what Ed's on Thursday nights. Bitch. Tammy's also in this episode. That's my husband. I'm Richard. And you must be Tom. Husband? Stay calm, Tom. Okay, just stay calm. Deep breath, take a deep breath. Count, count to ten. Ben and Adrian are being pressured to get married by Leo. Leo really wants them to get married if they're going to have the baby together. In episode 10, Ricky decides he's going to fly to New York to spend time with Amy so that they can work out their relationship. He also says the word program very strangely. He says program. The end of the program, just like all... Amy also tells Ricky a story about why she plays the French hor horn, which directly contradicts the story she told in season one. Episode 11. Amy's still in New York, Ricky's gone, her friends show up at her door and say, let's go to the pajama club. That is a club where you can only wear pajamas, and also teenagers are allowed in. Dad, I can't hear you. Talk louder. What kind of club? What kind of club? It's a pajama club. You have to wear pajamas to get in. Pajama club. You have to wear pajamas to get in. It's Amy's birthday, but everyone's forgot. It's her 16th birthday. Um, this is, in fact, a reference to uh, Molly Ringwald's famous movie, Sixteen Candles. We also get some Betty. Is he dead, Ricky? Because, well, if he is dead, uh, she's going to need Ben more than ever. I mean, not that I would want Ricky to be dead. It's just that if, if Ricky isn't dead, is he? I mean... Or is he hurt or something? Unfortunately, no. Jeez, Ben. I'm really hungry. Episode 12, Madison's dad screams, Oral sex? Oral sex? <laughs> and we also get Betty saying that she doesn't need a will because everything she owns is hidden in a, a book. He has a will? Well, yeah, of course he has a will. Ben. That's terrible news. A will is like a curse. You know, you you sign the will and and then you die. If I die, all of this is yours. See? I don't need no stinking will. Gives Ben this massive ring she apparently got from a count and tells him to propose to Adrian with it. And also she says, Oh gosh, I love words. You know, if I hadn't ended up being a hooker, I'd probably be a writer. This is a class. This is really a really good Betty scene. In episode thirteen, we find out that Grant has a really hot mom. I want to make love to you in this club. Milf hunters 
be on guard. Amy has just dropped out of her music program to be with Ricky because that's sane. In episode 14, Ashley is trying to have sex with Ricky. Oh my god, don't you have to be at school? And it doesn't impact their relationship at all, so good for them. We also get one of the most iconic Betty scenes at the beginning of this episode. Do you know how much that thing is worth? How do you know how much it's worth? I had it appraised. When? When I found your book hidden in here. Why? Insurance. You had it in a book titled Fake Book. I noticed it. I figured a thief would notice it. $50,000. What? Oh my gosh! Oh, wow! I feel like I'm on Antiques Roadshow. Oh, ain't that something, Ben? Need I say more about that? Madison and Lauren have to work at the mall for the summer, and they have these really camp outfits. Their outfits are so slay. Very high camp. Grace is once again heading off to medical camp for the summer, and Grant is actually coming with her. Ricky and Amy, at the end of this episode, have their first date, which is them dressing up to eat dinner at home with John. You said it was over! You said it was over! The way they format these seasons is there's a summertime jump. So episode 15 is supposed to be after summer break. Adrian walks into school pregnant like just massively pregnant and she just puts a whole bunch of almonds into her locker just my snacks it turns out that this is actually the std episode where we're talking about stds so amy says i'll only have sex with you if you get an std test and ricky's like that's ridiculous i don't have stds ashley's also trying to quit school she wants to be homeschooled and we find out that adrian's baby is a girl slay there's too many boy babies in this in this universe too many little boys that's on the niña in episode 16, I think we can count this as Nora's official entrance to characterhood. This is like her first actual episode. It's like looking in a mirror. I mean, before I was into alcohol and drugs and, well, guys. And Grace has started dating Grant. Grace also wants Grant to get an STD test. Or maybe Grant wants her to get one, but she's offended. She's like, I don't have STDs. And she says... I'm some sort of disease-carrying skank. And he says, yeah, but you're my disease-carrying skank. Come on, you disease-carrying skank. You know I love you. Madison's dating a full-on adult. You're not 20 years old. 20 years old would be too old, but you're years older than 20 years old. 20 and a half. Huh? <laughs> Amy and Ricky are trying to move in together, and Amy keeps saying she's an adult. May I remind you she, that she is 16 years old? It's very annoying, and for that, Amy's going into jail. Our lines are becoming very sloppy, but I don't super care. All right, episode 17. Betty and Leo talk to Ben about proposing. He's going to do it. He's getting prepared to do so. When people really love each other, they lie for each other. And one day when you're married, you'll lie for Adrian, and she'll lie for you. It's fun. And then Ben proposes to Adrian at a taco stand. I'd be honored if you'd be my wife. In episode 18, Leo says he's going to buy Adrian and Ben a condo to live in with their baby. Betty, in one of her most iconic moments, says that there's a striking family resemblance between Jesus and Adrian's family. Of the pictures of your grandfather in the upstairs hallway, you know, just give you such a sense of family history. That's not my grandfather. Those pictures belong to Reuben, and those pictures are of Jesus. Oh, well, and such a family resemblance. George sneaks into Ricky's house with the dog, and it's just very funny. Hello? Ricky? Post is clear. I should add a friend line between George and Ricky. They're like besties at this point. In episode 19, we get a new player, Toby. He has no lines yet, but him and Ashley are just study buddies. He is really great. I like him a lot. 
Do you have a British accent? I was just gonna ask you the same thing. No. No. Not, Not exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'm just affecting an accent to differentiate myself from the common people. As am I. And Grace asks if Kathleen is afraid that she'll die if Grace has sex. You're not afraid that if I have sex, you're going to die too, are you? That's a nice callback to last season. George is now after Nora. They go to dinner, and while they're there, they meet up with Reuben and Reuben's co-worker, and Nora kisses the woman on the mouth. Yeah, you guessed it. Nora's a lesbian. Word. I was <laughs> going to tell you. Oh, God. I almost slept with a lesbian. Uh, Alexa, play Pink Triangle by Weezer. I'm stuck, she's a lesbian, but I found the one. In episode 20, we get this very strange scene of Adrian reversing her car to talk to Amy, but the scene is very long. It goes on for a weird amount of time. I didn't slow this scene down at all. Just watch how long it takes Adrian to reverse her car to be next to Amy. Why did this entire clip make the final cut? They didn't cut out any of that at all. Hi. Hi, Adrian. Also, I don't know where the hell Jeff is. He hasn't been around for many, many episodes. He is still in a remote village in Africa. I mean, even if the plane doesn't crash, he's still got four weeks in a remote village in Africa. Which is the same village that Marshall worked at and where he was headed when he died in the plane crash. Amy officially moves in with Ricky, and Ben and Adrian are moving in together now, too. In episode 21, Adrian is trying on wedding dresses because she's going to get married. I have never seen that dress look better on anyone. Really? <laughs> Darling. And Leo says some some weird shit about you have to put a penny in a jar every time you have sex when you're married or something. During your first year of marriage, uh, you put a penny in a bucket every time you have sex. Then starting your second year of marriage, usually about the time when the baby comes along, you, you take a penny out every time you have sex. And you won't drain that bucket if you're married for 50 years. We'll see about that. The boys... Ricky, Jack, and Tom are at the golf course, and they're talking about sex and girls and boy stuff. You know, uh, Grace asked me if I'd ask my dad if he'd marry Adrian and Ben. Apparently they had sex last weekend, and the two of them thought they saw God or something. Why not me, God? Why not me? George is flirting with a woman who's way too young for him, and then Ricky walks into the room, and it turns out Ricky has slept with her before. Back at Grace's house, Kathleen and Grace are getting a visit from... Grant and his parents. We know that Grant's mom is a MILF. What we didn't know is that Grant's dad is geriatric. He's ancient. He's really, really old. And this is Grant's father, my husband of 20 years. This is Vic Volberg. Vic Volberg, the voice of sports. I literally thought it was his grandfather. And then he starts singing Young at Heart and Grace and Grant dance. Fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you if you're young at heart. Come on, dance, you two. Or it's hard you will find to be narrow of mind if you're young at heart. You can go to extremes with impossible schemes. You can laugh when your dreams fall apart at the seams episode 22 and 23 the girls are planning a baby shower for adrian which ends up being hard because everyone hates her do you think tammy would go to a shower for adrian would my old girlfriend go to a shower for a woman i still love i doubt it in the end some girls come and i'm sorry about the bar mitzvah that's okay my cousin's not really jewish he just wanted a bar mitzvah because all of his friends are jewish so yeah also the geriatric dad comes back again. Sir, I'm a terrible friend. I'm not a shrink cookie. I'm afraid all I can help you with is Grant. Episode 24. My God, this is a long season. Betty's mom is dying, so she's going to miss the wedding. Is someone dying? Someone better be dying if she's not coming to my wedding. Ben. How'd you know? Someone's actually dying? My mother. Oh, Betty, I am... God, I am sorry. I'm really sorry. My thought is that Betty could be the woman from White Lotus because her mom died and that's why she was on that vacation. 
So in my head, that's where she went. George is once again flirting with a very young woman. This time it is the new guidance counselor. Or would you rather say, be with just one person? Okay. Are you married? Uh, Adrian and Ben get married and there's a montage with just the way you are. So don't even bother asking if you look okay. You know I said, when I, when I see your face. Do, 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 do. There's, not There's not a thing, thing that, that I would change Because girl, girl, you're amazing Just the way you are I swim anemia In episode 25, they come back to school after getting married And everyone throws rice on them in the hallway Oh my god, is everyone here for me? I mean, us? Everyone, welcome Mr. and Mrs. Ben Boykovich back to school <laughs> Thank you, thank you, everyone. This is so nice of you. I love you. Wow, thank you. Um, you're all invited to our place. No, 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 they're not. Uh, uh, no, this is all very nice, but you can't come over. Hey, hey, ow, that hurts. That's what married people do. They have people over. No, I, I don't think married people in high school do that. Not when they're having a baby. Adrian gets to her locker, and there's a weird shrine of photos of her and Ben on it. Oh my god, look at this. It's so cute. That is cute. Episode 26, Tom has a wife who's really just a woman who's living in his house with him, but she has two kids. But I'm going to try and make it work. He's a nice guy. And your dad is not. <laughs> and some other things in this episode that happen... You look like an idiot. You know that, right? Good morning! <laughs> good morning. Someone's in a good mood. Ugh. And then Grace is on a date with Grant, and she wants to meet Grant's ex-girlfriend. She's just a tiny bit chubby, and Grace... Upon meeting her, Jesus, and you must be fat. Grace. I must be. Oh, dear God. For that, Grace is going to jail. <laughs> so Adrian goes into labor. We don't get many updates. However, when we do get one, Mercy is dead. Mercy was a stillborn baby. What we know about this is that there was no reason for it. It just happened. So... And we get some of the most offensive and horrific acting of the entire show uh, in the scenes where everyone's crying about the baby dying. Ben's falling to the floor and crying and sobbing. It's just all really, really bad. And in the, ar in the arms of an angel is playing. Hi, I'm Sarah McLaughlin, and your donation to the ASPCA can spend all your time waiting for that second, second chance. What's wrong, Mr. Boykovich? Is something wrong? Yeah, that okay. was right. Keeps on twisting, 
keeps, keeps on building, building the lies that, that you make up for all that you lack. It don't make no difference. Escape one, one last time. time. It's, it's easier to clean this sweet madness. <laughs> oh, this sweet madness. Oh, this glorious sadness. It brings me to my knees. In the arms of some angel, fly away from here. In this dark, cold hotel room. That's for the late to the party. Not that we needed to be here at all. Should she suffer? All right, clap if you think she should suffer. I begin to pass out. Then my head hit the wall. Boom! So. Okay, and that's how the season ends, with Mercy's tragic passing. Season three is a whirlwind. Amy being in New York, coming home. Amy's now with Ricky. Adrian is with Ben, and they had a baby, and they live together, and they're married. Right. Anne and George are back together. They're raising Robbie. However, they're also not really back together because George is trying to get with Nora, but Nora's a lesbian. Jeff has been in Zimbabwe for a very long time. Madison and Jack have gotten together. And Grace said something about fat. Do you remember that scene from Avengers where Natasha's looking at a video of Clint's baby and she just says fat for no reason? Fat. That was Grace. Highlights from this season, I would have to say, I don't know if there are any. This is probably my least favorite season. Ben is just so privileged, and they bought him a house. I mean, God, and Amy's so annoying. Moving right along, let's get to season four. <laughs> you know, just self-esteem is pretty high for somebody going through a divorce so early. Season four, I'm going back to my roots. We're not using a wig or a hat. Season four, episode one. Amy and Ricky are trying to fuck, and John comes in, and they're like, we need our own bedroom because this is ridiculous. Okay, stop it. Kevin's in there. Come in. And? Bye-bye. Goodbye. So they decide that they're going to start sleeping on a pull-out couch in the living room, and John's going to get a bedroom. Ashley is now on a road trip with Toby because she got her GED instead of becoming homeschooled, so she doesn't have to go to school anymore. Yeah, I don't know how to get to the red line. Adrian is in her depression era. Leo is messing around on Betty. He has a huge crush on his secretary. Right, so for seemingly no reason other than Jennifer Coolidge got too famous to do Secret Life, Betty is now like constantly gone and Leo is actively pursuing his secretary, Camille who is apparently a woman who's worked there for years, even though this is the first we've heard of her. He keeps buying her like expensive presents and telling her that he loves her. Would you mind calling me? I would really like to talk to you. Love, Leo. Which, okay. Like, I get it. Jennifer Coolidge was too famous to be on your stupid show. But come on. Come on, that's such a shitty way for her to go. In episode two, we find out that Grace has been in Africa and she's video calling Adrian from a tent. It's amazing. But he said I could if I wanted. Betty goes to see Adrian to help her get out of her depression era and she tells her to like go for a walk and tighten her butt up. Well, you're not Jewish, are you? You haven't covered up all your mirrors, have you? No, I haven't covered the mirrors. Well, good, because Adrian, I just don't want you to settle for looking like a tomato. You know, when you used to be such a hot tomato. Is it, is it tamale? Is it hot tamale? I don't think it could be tamale because tamales are thin. I just think you should go to the gym. I think you should just go out and go for a walk and get some of those new shoes that can make your butt tight. When I tell you that I forgot to add this scene of George talking to a small Amy, like in his head, Amy's trying to get George to let her completely move out and also get married. And he has a conversation with her younger self. What the fuck?
who made that decision i'd like to meet you don't wear a bulletproof vest that was a joke i'm sorry that wasn't a threat please let me know first of all if a child that age should be talking like that like is she not talking like a baby also that child looks nothing like shailene woodley in episode three grace returns home and comes to visit adrian and adrian says she likes being fat i like being fat grace while she was in africa cheated on grant with i need to add this guy to the wall daniel grace met daniel in zimbabwe and slept with him cheating on grant so grace can stay in jail for that if all the guys look like that over there i might volunteer he's not from over there he's from over here so daniel's actually from california and also just happened to be in zimbabwe pretending to be a doctor just like grace so now he's back and they're dating she's just completely thrown grant out which is fine because i find him ugly and daniel's cute also daniel's in college a little worried about that age gap but nora's back she's always around and she's working at the butcher shop you know i mentioned that woman who works at the butcher shop who looks and acts lesbian but isn't yeah her and nora have hella sexual tension he's a nice bunny I prefer dead cows to people any day. Leo is once again simping for Camille. Do you want a raise? No. I, I just gave you a raise. Or I could give you another raise. Or a promotion. Well, not a promotion. Uh, I want you right here, but we could call you a vice president or something. Episode four is a really good one. John has a fever. Amy really wants to take him to the doctor. She's like, he has a fever. He needs to go to the ER right now. And Ricky says, you're crazy. I think he just has an ear infection. He doesn't need to go to the doctor. John's symptoms are having a fever and repeatedly covering his ears and saying, ow. Ow. Amy just gets him in the car and takes him to the doctor. They wait there for a long time. They keep fighting and, and John keeps saying, ow. He's okay. He's okay. He's obviously okay. Ow. They see the doctor, he looks at him and says, oh yeah, there's nothing wrong with him. You guys are just arguing too much and it's hurting his ears. How do you know? You don't even look like a doctor, maybe you're not a doctor. Got me, I'm just a resident, which means legally I am a doctor. But hey, kids don't like doctors who look like doctors, so there you go. There's no ear infection. But he's holding his ears and saying ow and he has a fever no he doesn't he only had a fever when you took his temperature maybe you didn't read it right i read it right i know how to take his temperature oh. see i told you he doesn't have an ear infection he has to why would he be doing that um i'm gonna take a guess because the two of you can't quit arguing you haven't noticed him when you raise your voices he doesn't like it yeah you two better get a handle on that especially if you're gonna live together bye john Bye. How embarrassing is that? Does not explain the fever, though. Also, we see Adrian calling her doctor and asking if it's too early to get pregnant again. Episode 5, we get a really great scene of Adrian power walking to an Adele song <laughs> in her power suit. They're starting in my car. We shade a fever pitch. It's bringing me out the dark. Finally, I can see you crystal clear. Go ahead and sell me out and I think you should fail. See how I be with every piece of you. Don't let no rest to make the things that I will do. Ben is in his alcoholism arc. He's threatening Adrian when he finds out Adrian accidentally donated one of his childhood stuffed animals. Where's Mr. Bear? Who? My bear. Where is my bear? I never even wanted to marry you. I never even wanted to have sex with you in the first place. Every single bit of pain that both of us have had has been because of you. Because of you. And I can't take it anymore. That's so anemia. Ben's going to jail. He also passes out in a restaurant because he's so drunk. Hand me another beer. Never mind. I'll get it myself. From the liquor store. You're drunk? No, I wouldn't say I'm drunk, but I'm celebrating, yes. Celebrating what? I finally found a way out of my marriage. And what was that? Honesty. His alcoholism era is low-key serving. In episode six, Ricky has an interview with a college, but when he gets there, the interviewer is a woman he's had sex with before, and she says, if you don't have sex with me, I'm not going to let you in. You don't want to christen my new office? He just takes the L. When the guidance counselor finds out about it and says, actually, that's really wrong, and that's a lawsuit, he says, 
just leave it be. And she listens. <laughs> Tom and Tammy are still working at the same place. And Tammy comes in and flirts with him. And he says, I'm going to report you for sexual harassment. I could take it off. What? You marry woman. Woman? I'm bored. I tell you what I'll do. I'll say you to a seminar on sexual harassment. I thought I was doing a good job of that. It is against the law. Sorry, I thought it was just human nature. I'll get back to you. You know where my cubicle is? It's worth mentioning that Jack is like really on his clown shit, constantly flipping between wanting Madison and wanting Grace. Episode seven. Ashley and Toby are in Florida spinning signs because they can't get a job. And Amy calls someone a skank. She's a skank, a straight up skank. Episode eight. This whole time, I haven't included this because it's not really important, but Lauren's been dating this man named Jesse on and off. And Jesse broke up with her because she wouldn't have sex with him. See a theme? At the end of this episode, Lauren is wa babysitting John. And Amy says to Lauren over the phone that she talked to Jesse and Jesse still likes her. Lauren hangs up the phone and then starts singing. I want to love you. want to love treat you right. I want to love you every day and every night. We'll be together. Also, Nora is cleaning up her act. She is at an AA meeting. Okay, Slay. In episode nine, Adrian and Ben fight because Adrian wants to get pregnant again, and Ben breaks up with her for good, so she moves back in next door with her parents. Amy and Ricky are folding clothes, and, and Adrian peeks her head through the window and scares them. <laughs> episode 10, Ricky's brother, her, his foster brother, who was in juvie, got let out of juvie because it was over full. He is going to school with everyone. How'd you find me? Bone app. Find Ricky, it's new. Adrian is trying to get over Ben, so she's gonna go on a date with Daniel's neighbor, and she kisses him, okay? <laughs> you know what, your self-esteem is pretty high for somebody going through a divorce so early in life. Episode 11, she's getting ghosted by Daniel's neighbor. She keeps calling him over and over, and he's like, you're crazy, so he doesn't answer. Grace, guys, don't not call me, okay? This has never happened before. His roommate is named Omar. Adrian starts dating Omar, the guy who goes to his roommate, who's also Daniel's neighbor. Omar is also in college. By this point, Nora and George are like really besties, so I'm gonna add that. And Nora's like staying with George. And Anne and Nora meet because Anne's been staying with Mimsy, so she just like hasn't been there. Anne finds out Nora's a lesbian, and Anne says, you know she's not going to sleep with you, right? And George says, uh, yeah, I know what a lesbian is. Lesbian rights. You know she's not going to have sex with you. I know that. I know what a lesbian is. Also in this episode, Henry breaks up with Alice. We haven't heard from them for a long time. They're just always pretty stable, but Henry breaks up with Alice because he doesn't want to waste his last year of high school. In episode 12... Amy is really pressuring Ricky to propose to her, and Betty meets some random lawyer in the airport who's going to help her get divorced from Leo. Just want to make sure that everything's perfect for you. Oh, thank you. Well, just make sure the wings are perfect. You know, that's all I'm really worried about, you know, the, the wings falling off. Divorce attorney, if I could be of any help whatsoever, you give me a call. So you have your own jet? Belongs to a client of mine. And you, too, could have a jet, sweetheart, if you want one. Really? <laughs> and we also find out that Ricky is valedictorian, so that's a slay for him. Episode 13. This one's a big one, guys. Everyone's graduating. And by everyone, I mean the older kids, so Jack, Ricky, and Adrian. At graduation, Ricky proposes to Amy on stage. Fortnite. Ah. Uh. After <laughs> that, there's a party. Can you see my little cat? <laughs> Kiwi, come here. He ran away. After graduation, there's a party at a lake house that has alcohol at it. Everyone's in attendance. And this is where it gets crazy. Ricky and Amy walk in and everyone's like, woo, cheering because they just got engaged. Then Adrian has been for the past few episodes saying that she really needs to just kiss Ricky one last time. 
So Ricky asks Amy if he can kiss Adrian at this party for one last time. And she says yes. So he goes over there and kisses Adrian. And she says, I'm free. I'm free. Omar turns around and sees Adrian kissing Ricky and then gets mad at Adrian. Ben meets a girl. They're listening to SNM by Rihanna in these scenes, so I'm going to do the dialogue. Hi, Ben Bogovich. I am the king. That's my dad. I am the prince. Really? Yeah. And you are? Dylan. My parents on the house next door. And I have to put her on the wall. And perhaps my shittiest tip job yet, I've added Dylan to the wall. Dylan meets Ben, and they hook up. They don't have sex, but they, like, sleep together. Like, literally sleep. She's this fiery redhead, and he's trying to get over Adrian. He's like, this is a sleigh. It's the next morning, and this is where the real drama starts. Lauren wakes up and tries to find her boyfriend, Jesse, and Madison. She walks into a room. And they're in bed together, and they just had sex. Uh, I'm not dressed. Are you sure about that? Okay, look, I'm sorry about last night, but I told you I wasn't going to drink or do any of that stuff. And I told you I wasn't going to sleep with you, so I don't know why you got so upset with me again. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. Now Lauren is very mad at Madison, understandably. Henry had sex with Adrian. I have a right. Ben finds out about this and he's very upset because that's his ex-wife and his best friend. Episode 14 is when Dylan really starts to make an appearance and we meet her parents who are two of the worst actors I've ever seen in television. And he's the son of the Sausage King. Really? But you're a vegetarian, well, at least for the past month, which I'm still not sure is healthy. Of course, it might be healthier than eating sausage every day. So when can you get him over here? Yeah, get him over here. And Ashley comes back. Her and Toby are an item now. Dylan has crazy parents who are like, you can't date Ben. He's been divorced and had a baby, and he's only 16. The guy is married. <laughs> he can't be. He had to get married, and then something happened with the baby. I didn't get that. No, um, I think you've heard enough. Come on. Which is fair. They're just really annoying. Rosita from The Walking Dead, who is Omar's ex girlfriend is Dylan's best friend. They want to smoke weed with Ben. They do and they get caught by Leo and now Ben and Dylan are forbidden from seeing each other. Do I smell pot? Do you? Does he? Yeah, I think he does. Dylan, what's going on here? In episode 15, Grace and Adrian decide that they're going to move into Adrian's condo for the summer. Grace isn't going to med camp this summer. Kathleen is going to Zimbabwe to spend some time with Jeff. Remember that she's married? Yeah. Leo is trying to punish Ben for being a bad boy, and he says that he has to go to summer school, and he says some very strange things about spanking Ben by accessing his apps. If I go to summer school, I'll have access to a computer because they have computers in the library. Access to school, Dylan, again? And I'll access your ass, you got it? What does that mean? <laughs> Are you threatening to spank me? I'm gonna teach you to Are you behave. threatening to spank me? And Ricky's delinquent brother is flirting with Madison, and Madison has no friends, so she's into it. Damn, any guy would want to sleep with you. You are so good looking, you know that? And sexy. You are really sexy. You look all innocent, but hey, you're hot. <laughs> They're like, who are you again? Episode 16, Dylan's parents are having cocktails at Ben's house. And Ben's dad is trying to convince them that Dylan can date Ben. So we should be going. We were just invited for cocktails. Well, not cocktails, beverages and canapes. Amy is setting up an inter intervention between Madison and Lauren because she's, she's tired of being in the middle of their drama. Finally, Kathleen comes back from Zimbabwe. But she's not alone because, yeah, remember Marshall, Kathleen's second husband and Grace's dad? Yeah, you know why he was in Zimbabwe all the time? It wasn't just so he could be a doctor. He also had a secret family there. And he has a son named Jacob, played by this man who was in Grease Live. Or Hairspray Live, one of the two. Please. If you don't let me live with you, she's going to send me to boarding school in Paris. I hate Paris. He just wants to live out his American education dream, right? And who's this Jacob character? All of a sudden she has a brother? It's her brother. 
It's her half-brother. Apparently, her dad had another child with some woman that he used to see when he went back to do all that volunteer medical work in Africa. Grace hates that she has a half-brother. <laughs> Everybody knew my dad was an upstanding citizen, and we were a strong, upstanding Christian family, and now we all look like a bunch of idiots, and he looks like some pervert. In episode 17, the plot line is that George thinks Anne is a lesbian, and he is telling everybody. <laughs> I'm not gay. Anne decides that her and Ashley need to go on a soul-searching vacation to Europe. Amy is upset with Anne because of the rumor that she's gay. Amy feels like because people are saying her mom is gay, that means she's gay, and she doesn't like that. She can go to jail for that. Betty is finally back, and she has some good lines. Leo is still like trying to get Dylan's parents to let Ben see Dylan for some reason. Just fell apart tonight with a pudding pop. He couldn't believe you were married to a hooker. They couldn't, but mostly him. Pudding pop? Uh, we sometimes have nicknames for people we love. <laughs> like you, King. I am the King. Oh, I knew we could make you say it. <laughs> Dylan's dad is called Pudding Pop. Leo calls him. Dylan's dad answers the phone and says. No caller ID, huh? This better not be you, Ben Boykovich, calling at this time of the night. It's not Ben. It's me, Leo Boykovich. And I got news for you, Mr. Pudding Pop. My ex-wife is not a prostitute. Hi, everyone. Editing Hannah here. At this point, my camera had turned off in the middle of the night when I was filming because I ran out of memory. So I had to resume filming in the morning, and when I did that, my microphone came unplugged when I hit record, so my microphone wasn't recording any of it the whole time. I still have audio, it's just not going to be of the same quality. So the rest of the video is going to be this different audio that's harder to listen to, but the video is intact, which is what matters. We're just gonna have to work with what we got. That's my disclaimer. Enjoy the rest of the video. Good morning, everyone. Um, how obvious is it that I am on the struggle bus this morning? In the middle of filming last night, I my phone ran out of battery. So I took that as a sign that I need to stop, and I went to sleep. And now I am not only sore in the body, but also in the mind. And my eyes hurt, and I think I'm losing my voice. I got cut off in the middle of episode 18, so I'm just gonna start episode 18 over. My cat, like, thinks that someone, is, I'm talking to somebody. Meet Kiwi. Say hi. She's very stupid. I'm now wearing a hat because my hair looks really gross. And yes, I'm a Sox fan, I'm not a Cubs fan. Let's begin. Grace is in bitch mode because her brother exists, which is why she is in jail. <laughs> the entire plot of this episode, the entire, like, idea behind this episode is that it's very hot outside so everyone the whole episode is complaining about how hot it is outside john and ricky on their hot hot day are going to go and spend their time at the beach amy who is in summer school because she's failing school amy's pissed off because she can't go to the beach before ricky and john leave for the beach george shows up and he goes gross i hate being outside when it's hot let's bring the beach here I used to do this for the girls all the time. George sets up an indoor beach in Ricky's apartment. Besides, Robbie would never nap at the beach. It like pounds and pounds of sand in, in, the, in the middle of the apartment. That's the thing that happens. Ben is in summer school only because he smoked weed. He doesn't actually need to be in summer school, but his dad is using it as a punishment for him smoking. And Dylan, mad that she's being forbidden from seeing Ben, has decided that she's going to show up to his summer school today and just be there. When asked by the guidance counselor who she is, Ben and Dylan say that uh, Dylan is his cousin. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, please. You're not his cousin. You're not from Chicago. Betty visits Nora, who is now working as Leo's secretary because he was too romantically interested in Camille, so he needed a new secretary. So Betty comes to visit Nora and tell her that she should go back to school just like Betty has. And Betty is wearing clothes that kids wear at school. Betty? Nora? Yeah. <laughs> I 
nice to meet you finally. How did you know who I am? Oh, I, I'd know you anywhere. I, I've seen some of the pictures around the office, and, and I was expecting you. Still, I mean, I'm just so surprised you recognized me. Now, these are my new school clothes. You know, I've had to change my entire wardrobe, you know, so I could fit in. My counselor is helping me with that, you know, the, the fitting in. Well, you do look different. Uh, you look um, younger. Oh. And smarter. Speaking of which, I uh, have your tuition check for you. Oh, thank you, Nora. Yeah. And please thank Leo for me. Will do. Leo really loves that air conditioner, doesn't he? Yes, he really does. <laughs> oh, you know, Betty, if you don't mind my asking, I was just wondering, what did you decide to major in, just out of curiosity? Oh, uh, it's called anthropology, and it's the study of man. Uh-huh. Yeah, good choice. I bet you'll do well with that. Oh, I hope so. I mean, I don't really know what I want to do. You know, I just, I just want to study something. You know, even if I have to change my major, like, later on, Gosh, I love that college lingo. My major. <laughs> oh, I really am excited. That's something I've always wanted to do, but mm, I don't think I could do it at this point in my life. Well, you could if you wanted to. Leah would let you off work, I'm sure of it. Well, I'm just not the college type. There is no type. You could do it. You should do it. Think about it, Nora. Think about going back to school. Obama wants you to. And if you want to do it, then maybe you and I could share a dorm room together. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, actually, I think it would be a little too close to what my last place was, but um, <laughs> I will keep it in mind. Thanks, Betty. Think about it. All right. Well, take care. one of the best Betty scenes in the whole show. Grace and Adrian, who are getting home from school, so they've been at school all day, and everyone's saying the school has no air conditioning, okay? They get home to their condo, and what do they do but just start taking off all of their clothes? God help me, I can't tell a lie. In this show, nobody is ever naked. Like, even after sex, after hooking up, like, anything. I I'm not dressed. No one will ever have an article of clothing off, save for that first season where Ricky had no shirt on that one time. But in this episode, which I'm starting to think is the whole reason that it's hot outside, Adrian and Grace just start taking all their clothes off, and they're both sitting there in their underwear. Why? I don't know why. That's just something that happens. Are you sure you should be walking around like that if we're just friends? I don't know where the thermostat is. Back at school, Dylan's been spending the day with Ben. Remember, the guidance counselor thinks they're cousins, and they kiss. <laughs> and the guidance counselor is like, oh, oh my god, gross. At the very end of the episode, George, who was at the beach <laughs> at Ricky's house, packs up his beach and brings it to Kathleen's house. I actually thought you might, since it's so hot out. Yeah. Kathleen and Jeff are on the rocks because he's still in Africa and he doesn't want to come home. Now George is moving in on Kathleen. In episode 19, begins with a date montage in which they're both picking out outfits and Dylan goes through like four full looks and she ends up choosing the very worst one out of all of them. She does not look good. My name is Foreskin, 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 Foreskin. My name is Cheetos, Clip. Clip Cheetos, 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 four skin, four skin, four skin, clip, clip Cheetos, 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 four skin. I'm gonna put her in jail for this just because I can. Oh, also, another thing I forgot to mention yesterday is I found this online that says Rip Mercy 616 2011, and I believe that is from the show. Slay what you wanna slay and let the slay slow. That's from the Nina. Mercy is also a Gemini like myself. Okay, back to the back to the episode. Ricky and Amy are making out and Amy starts saying some BS and Ricky says, I thought we agreed no talking in bed. Bigger house. Hey, can, can you stop that? Don't we have an agreement about not talking in bed? Which I just think is funny because it means that Ricky doesn't like to hear Amy talk. 
Ben and Dylan are on their date, and they get home, and the parents are being so nosy nosy because they don't really like Ben, they don't trust him. They stand outside the door and pretend to be planning to have sex. The parents, when they've had enough, they fling open the door, and Ben and Dylan go, gotcha! And for that, I'm putting Ben in jail, because I can. Tom really is tired of being stuck in the house. Tom is like, hey, Slay, hey, Slay Jacob, let's go drive the car. And Jacob is like, I don't have a license, I'm from Zimbabwe. Tom says, don't worry, I have a license. They do get pulled over by, by some police officers when Tom is recklessly driving. Tom pulls out his license, and it's actually just a fishing license, not a driver's license. Son, this is a fishing license. Is it? Give him the officer your driver's license. I um, can't. You have to. That's the only license I have. I, I, I don't know, I swear. For that, Tom gets slay points. I don't think he did anything wrong. When the cops pull them over, Jacob says, Tom, we could go to jail. I'm going to get deported. We, 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 we could go to prison, Tom. And to that, I say how. How possibly could they go to jail? In episode 20, Anne is in Paris, trying to find herself, if you'll remember. She is with Ashley, but Ashley doesn't show up at all. So Anne is in Paris, and she ends up having sex with a really hot Parisian woman. I need to go for a cup of coffee. I hear coffee. Right, right, this is such a slay. Anne is fully gay now. This episode, we learn that Dylan is crazy. Dylan is extremely possessive and jealous. And Ben says, well, I like that she's jealous because that is how I know she likes me. Please get a grip, Ben. I would put you back in jail, but you're already there. George and Kathleen are getting more and more flirty as the days go by. Ricky is talking to Amy. I'm not really sure the full context of this conversation, but he he tells Amy that her mom is attractive. I want him to be attractive. Your mom's attractive too. That's right, divas. Uh, snatch those wigs. In episode 21, the guidance counselor tells Amy that she's failing summer school so bad that she needs to spend the day doing makeup work in the guidance counselor's office. The issue with that, though, is that the guidance counselor's office is on the only hallway within the school. And while she's in there doing her work, every single character comes to see her. <laughs> Fierce work, hunty. Amy's friends from her time in New York City, her friends from Juilliard come to stay, and they just make themselves a home in Amy and Ricky's apartment. And their children are menaces, and they don't watch their children, they're bad parents. And Ricky is very fed up, and he's been chasing the kids around all day. Okay, let's go. George and Kathleen kiss. So, Jeff, bye-bye, Jeff. Might as well be dead, because he is no no more. He never comes back. In episode 22, Ricky's like, when are we getting married, queen? Because we're engaged now. And Amy says, the 4th of July. And they're telling everyone, and everyone's like, the 4th of July? That's a little weird. Yeah, okay. More on that later. Madison and Lauren, who are still on the rocks because uh, Madison slept with Lauren's boyfriend, have made up. So they're friends again. Ben and Dylan are hanging out with all of their friends. And Leo walks in and all the girls say in unison, Hello girls. He's, He's the, the king. king. <laughs> Leo is now officially with Camille. Leo and Betty are working on getting a divorce. Betty had the lawyer come and Leo wrote her like this massive check. But he said he knew, he knew Betty's character and that she wouldn't cash the check because she's not that kind of person. And of course she didn't, and she came to see Leo and said all she wanted was to go to school. Dylan is also trying to get Ben to transfer to her private school instead of going to the nasty public school with the rest of these gremlins. Another thing you need to know about this show is that one of the main tropes that they like to keep bringing up is having one person text another and then news spreading very, very quickly. George tells Kathleen who he's sleeping with, that Anne is a lesbian. Kathleen tells her daughter Grace. Grace tells Adrian, and Adrian sends a mass text to everybody. So now everyone knows.
knows that Anne's a lesbian. Further, they are spreading rumors that Amy is also a lesbian because her mom is. Episode 23 is what I have dubbed the gay episode. There's three random girls in the hall talking. We've never seen these girls before, and they are gossiping about Amy and Ricky's wedding. They say that Amy and Ricky are getting married on the 4th of July because Amy is gay, and the 4th of July is a gay holiday. I doubt you could put off marrying Ricky for another year if you weren't gay. And the 4th of July is such a gay day. Fireworks, sparklers, parades. Remember when I said the 4th of July would come back up again? <laughs> a mere 10 minutes ago? The subplot in this episode is that the 4th of July is a gay holiday. She chose a gay wedding day. I thought she was getting married the 4th of July. Hello? It's a gay holiday. Grace? And Adrian, they're meeting up in the hallway, wondering if they perhaps could be lesbians too. I can't believe no matter what happens, Amy Jurgens always ends up the center of attention. Well, if you want to be the center of attention, I could start a rumor that your mom's gay. Oh, no one would believe my mother is gay. She's a flight attendant. Flight attendant or not, I think everyone would remember that your mom had an affair with Amy's dad. And? And maybe George Jurgens has that effect on women. Maybe George Jurgens turns women gay. You are gay! You know, the legalization of gay marriage could be just around the corner. Could end up with two moms. Great. Two moms. Better than one mom and a lying, cheating dad. Or a stepdad who runs away to Africa and then sends back the other dad's kid. <laughs> I doubt that would happen again. They're like, have you thought about kissing a girl? And Adrian's like, of course I have. Adrian says she's thought about kissing Angelina Jolie or something like that. And, and Grace is like, well, I've thought about kissing you. Before you say anything, I have nothing against lesbians or gays or bi's or trans or anyone questioning what they are. I just, I just know what I am. And I know I'm not interested in women. Are you thinking about having sex with a woman? Well, I can't say I've never thought about having sex with a woman. I've, I've thought about kissing a woman anyway. Who? I don't know. Not me. You know, of course not you. Why not me? I thought about kissing you. Oh my god, I, I did not just, I did not say that. Gay? That's pretty gay, Grace. Grace is like, I'd go, and she gets all nervous. She remember she's a Christian. Betty is setting up her new dorm room with help from gay Leon from the furniture store. Remember him? Well, all the other girls are getting bunk beds. Like, ooh, an antique recamier with a tufted back and a couple of Napoleon shares, but with a bold fabric. Right. And Betty says that Amy is getting married on the 4th of July, and Leon agrees that that's the gayest holiday. So at least we have some gay approval of that idea. Is she coming back early because Amy is gay? Amy Jurgens is gay? Yeah, but she's getting married to Ricky on the 4th of July. Oh, good choice. It's my favorite holiday. But are you sure about this, Betty? Oh, yeah. I heard from the kids at school. They text me all the time. And you know what? It makes sense. Since her mother is gay. Her mother-in-law, Nora. No. Her mother, Anne. Anne is gay. Hmm. Have you ever thought about being gay? George and Nora, who of course are besties, we know this, talking about the 4th of July being a gay holiday. They are discussing back and forth, and this is one of my favorite scenes. She's gonna have enough to worry about when she finds out Amy's gay. Wait, did you say the 4th of July is a gay holiday? Well, it wasn't, but apparently someone at the high school started that rumor, and now it is. Teenagers. What's gay about the 4th of July? Hot dogs? I don't know. I have never heard that one before. Um, could it be volleyball? Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam is not gay. Plenty flamboyant clothing he's wearing there. At Ricky and Amy's house, Amy extremely upset that everyone thinks she's gay. She says, I am deeply heterosexual. And Ricky's laughing at her because she th he thinks she's stupid. I mean, what's another gay day to get married? What? Yeah, people think that the 4th of July is some kind of high holy day for gay marriage. I am not gay. I am deeply heterosexual. John says, gay. Must be going around gay care. I mean, daycare. Ah! Flash over to Grace and Adrian's condo, where they are once again dabbling in lesbianism. And they kiss. Kiss me. What? Yeah, you're curious. I'm curious. Just kiss me. 
All right. Shippers everywhere rejoice. Adrian and Grace are, uh, have kissed each other. Rain on me, rain, rain, rain on me. They're gay now. Play. After they kiss, they decide that maybe they're not actually gay. Or at least Adrian decides that. I'm gay. Actually, I'm not. Grace is now having a panic attack about the fact that she might be gay. She goes home and calls Jack over and she freaks out and she says, I need you to have sex with me right now. I think I'm gay. I need you to have, I need you to have lots and lots of sex with me. Why would I come over here? Because I need you to kiss me. Yeah, sure, I'll kiss you. And I need you to be my boyfriend and have sex with me. Lots and lots and lots of sex, okay? Day and night, around the clock, 24-7, oral sex, 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 any kind of sex, all kinds of sex. I need that with you. And he's like, wait, you kissed Adrian? That's hot. Because Jack is a menace. Jack's going back to jail. Jack's in jail for fetishizing lesbians. This is when we get the first of Tom's Americana, American pride leanings here. Tom says to Jacob, because this is America and everybody lies to their mother. Because this is America. Everyone lies to the mother. They do not. Anne is also back. And she's walking into a shit show. I suspect things are about to heat up. Episode 24 is gay episode number two. Hey, okay, I am not gay, all right? If any of you are still talking about my mother or me or my wedding, my mother is not gay, I am not gay, I am getting married, and the 4th of July is not some kind of gay holiday. No one's talking about that. Oh, really? What are they talking about? Adrian and Grace kissed each other. Yep. Breaking news. Wow. Don't get any ideas. It's titled Love is Love. At the beginning, we have Adrian and Cindy talking about gay people <laughs> and Adrian's forays into lesbianism. Cindy says something about how it's a stereotype that flight attendants are gay. I've never heard that before, but what do I know? Did you ever kiss a girl? I'm a flight attendant. I've tried a lot of things. I've sampled a lot of cultures. I've been to the Taj Mahal. I've been to Machu Picchu, and I've been to Wimbledon. It goes to stereotypes. Not all women who play tennis are gay. People think that? Mm, yeah. Some people do. And some people think that all flight attendants are nothing but hookers with wings. Okay, well, Mom, I didn't come over here to listen to you complain about your job. Adrian starts disrespecting the gay community by saying the alphabet community. Well, the entire LGBTQ community? Oh, and what community is that? The alphabet community? Lesbian, gay, bi, trans, question community. I would put her in jail, but I find that hilarious. So I'm not going to. Grace, on the other hand, has come to the conclusion that she kissed a girl and now she's gay. All I know is I kissed a girl and now I'm gay. Can I still live here? What? If you don't want me to, I understand. Because being gay is inherently more difficult than being straight. Especially in high school, I would think. No, it's not. It's, like, cool to be gay. I didn't think I was this cool. And she's going to take her new identity into stride and start dressing like a lesbian. And she shows up to school trying to dress butch. It's me. I can't believe you walk right past me. I mean, you should know who I am. You kissed me twice. Just exploring. Exploring what? What I might look like if I decide to be a lesbian. No comment. <laughs> Dude. So Amy and Ricky, after school, they go over to Amy's house to meet up with Anne because she just got back. Anne is now telling everyone, yes, I am gay. I am, in fact, gay. So Amy comes over and gets mad at her mom for being gay. Ricky serves lesbian rights pussy, and he says, Amy, you're being rude. Also, what's wrong with you? No, it doesn't matter at all. You have a right to be happy, and no one can take that from you. Don't try and make me look like I have a thing against lesbians. I have this friend. She's a lesbian. Mm -hmm, and that's all right with me. Jack, lesbophobia remote, revoked. And now Amy is lesbophobia jail. I have a thing against lesbians. Work. So we just love Ricky, don't we? I do. This one. 
That's my man. Ben and Dylan, after school, are completely avoiding the gay plotline, and they are in Dylan's private school lighting a Bunsen burner and roasting marshmallows over it. They come home, and later, the school sets on fire and burns down. And it seems to be their fault. So they're going to deal with that later. The next day at school, why did I say that like Marsha from the Brady Bunch? Adrian is still on her homophobic shit, and a lesbian that apparently goes to school with them, why she hasn't been in this show at all up until now, I don't know, tells Adrian she's being very offensive. You know I'm gay, right? Oh, sure, there's Griffin, whose entire family seems to be gay, so he's had things maybe a little easier than the rest of us, and especially since he grew up with some self-esteem. And Adrian says, why? I'm just trying to get attention for being gay. For that, she's going to jail. She also once again says, LMNOP community. There is no voice for the entire LMNOP community. Thus ends season four. Season four, this is where we're at. These last three episodes where it's just constant gay talk are like truly, I think, some of the best episodes in the whole show. It's like every scene is worth watching. So if you're gonna watch it, just watch those three. This season is so quotable. It's really, really good. I very much like it. Gay. Some of the lows are all the lesbophobia. But you know, I deal with that in my day-to-day -day life. Another low is that Jeff is out of the picture now. I liked him because he's hot. Some of the highs, Anne is a lesbian. George and Kathleen are back together. I actually kind of like that. I hate Dylan though, she's awful. And Betty has some really good lines. However, Betty is only in one more episode. That's it, of the whole show, so that's sad. Now to season five. I became a Christian again. I figured, I heard that girl tell you to go to hell. Going into season five, here's the state of affairs. George and Kathleen are together. Anne is back and she's a lesbian, so she's not with anybody. Grace is currently unattached. Adrian is with Omar, but Omar told her that it's still cheating if she kissed a girl, and she didn't like that. Amy and Ricky, of course, are together and engaged, and Ben and Dylan are together. Leo is with Camille, Betty's out of the picture. Ashley and Toby are being a sleigh. Madison and Jack are probably still hooking up. Season five, episode one is actually very jam-packed. The very first scene we get is Amy and Ricky leaving a wedding chapel to I Think I Wanna Marry You by Bruno Mars. So we can only assume that they've eloped. I know this little chapel on the boulevard we can go on. That's all we know about that so far. Omar is now a student teacher at the high school, which Adrian is still attending because she needed to take summer school because she was in her depression era after Mercy died. But Adrian's finally graduated. She's, she's made a pass. So she has gotten her diploma from the guidance counselor. She's going to clean out her locker and she opens it and there's three photos in there, each one of her newest boyfriend. So Omar on top, Ben in the middle, and then Ricky on the bottom. She pulls them off one by one and then says to Ricky's photo, I'll see you in a few weeks, cutie. I'll see you in a couple of weeks, cutie. What's that about? I don't know. I think it means that they're going to the same college. Ben, though he is still attached to Dylan, had sex with Alice. So I'm gonna add that line. Ben and Alice have had a one night stand because they're both upset at their respective people. Ben's going to jail. Ben is truly a menace. So Ben is with Dylan right now. Alice and Henry broke up a long time ago, but you know, that's still not a reason to have sex with somebody, but you know. Ben, however, is cheating because he doesn't like how jealous Dylan gets, and also Dylan made him burn down a school. Ben continues to be mad at Henry for having sex with Adrian, although he just had sex with Alice, and they get in a big fight about it. Also, Henry doesn't know that Ben had sex with Alice yet. Why does he care so much about Adrian if he's with Dylan? I don't know. Dylan calls Ben and tells him that since the school burned down, her private school is leasing space at a school in the city, which happens to be their school. So now Dylan and all her private school friends are going to school with the rest of these yahoos. That's something my dad says. <laughs> Nora, who by the way still lives with George, is suspicious that Amy and Ricky have eloped and she's upset about this because she wanted to be there for the wedding. At the same time that Nora's trying to suss them out, Amy and Ricky are checking into a hotel in which they're lying to the receptionist and Amy's like, this is so fun to lie. They said they've just gotten married. 
and that they are adults and they are in college. The lie is supposed to be that they're adults. <laughs> Once they're in their room, they are eating on the bed and they have food and giant glasses of milk. And Amy says, this milk was such a great idea. This milk was such a great idea. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have wanted to get carted over a bottle of champagne since you already lied about how old we are. Well, I didn't want champagne anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> die, die, die! Right to jail, right away. Because they told the receptionist that they're adults, the receptionist actually sends champagne and they get it. And Amy says, we'll save this for later. Meaning they'll save that for when they're 21. <laughs> this is an anti-drinking message for all of you who couldn't tell. I hope she is lactose intolerant. Also notably, Amy is acting like a normal person for the first time in the entire series. Her acting is just so much more natural. I don't know if this is after she's done Divergent or like, you know, if she's upped her game, but she's just acting like a normal person, finally. George and Tom are besties, so I should add a line for that, but they're like full on besties. And it's kind of cute and I like that. Hey, Joe, I didn't know you're here. <clears throat> George and Kathleen are like fully together. They're like riding his motorcycle. Tom is very happy that George is with his mom. And Grace is once again on her gremlin vibe and she hates George just because George is with her mother. And she, Kiwi, what's wrong with you? And we cut to the guest house where Grace is once again a Christian and she is praying. And by praying, I mean sitting at a table. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord, I have ruined my life with sex. Guys used to fall over themselves looking at me in the hallway. I was like, it's like the it girl of Grant High. I was a hot virgin that everyone wanted to have sex with. And then I had sex. And now, now I'm just like every other girl in school. I made my whole life about boys and sex. And, and then, and then, and then I kissed Adrian. God, how could I kiss Adrian? Okay, and Jack walks in and is like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm a Christian again. I'm abstinent again. And he's like, okay. Cut to Toby, who is sleeping in Ashley's bed because they've just been living together in the garage, suspiciously. George finds out and gets mad, and Toby's upset because he's afraid that it's gonna ruin their thing. And he says, is it okay for boys to cry? I feel like crying. And then he starts crying. He's so sweet. Oh, I love Toby. I don't blame you if you do punch me, but it's okay for boys to cry. I even feel like crying. Well, don't. At Adrian's house, someone knocks on the door, and apparently her first instinct is to grab a baseball bat and walk towards the door like she's getting attacked. She says, who's there? And it's Reuben. So then she's like, oh. <laughs> Who is it? Over in Ben and Dylan world, Dylan is saying that Ben needs to stop worrying because she's going to use her dad's connections to get off for the crime of arson. I have to tell my dad what happened. Are you sure? Because I think I recall your dad telling you that if you got into any trouble with me, you were on your own. Yeah, but we love a privileged pair. They're going to jail for that. Actually, Dylan is going to jail specifically. I don't know what connections Puddin' Pop has, but no good. We also, at the end of the episode, find out that George knew that Ricky and Amy were, get, were eloping the entire time, and he actually paid for the hotel. So he tells the other adults, and they're all mad at him. Episode two starts with George walking into the house to the moms, and by the moms, I mean Nora, Anne, and Ricky's foster mom sitting around the table, and he compares them to witches. I know you're all gonna be here. I wanna pick up some eye and newt. Leo shows up to Dylan's house because now everyone's worried about the crime of arson, and he peeks through the window. There's like lots of peeking through windows in this last season. You can hide. Leo and Puddin Pop are talking and Puddin Pop is on his daddy's money, crime doesn't matter to rich people shit. And Leo is standing there and he's like crossing his arms very strangely. It's like, and then he says something about how his steak isn't rancid. We do not have rancid steak at Boy Convention International. We also find out that Rosita from The Walking Dead is dating Jack right now. They're sleeping together, but she's only doing it so she can get information on Ben for Dylan. So Dylan can stay in jail. That's weird. This is where stuff really starts going down. Ben comes over to Amy and Ricky's house to talk to them. And 
He finds out when he gets there that they have eloped, and this causes him to panic for some reason. So he walks into Reuben's house, who of course lives next door, and faints. He hits the floor and faints because Amy and Ricky have eloped. She talks. She needs to be held for a second here. At George's house, George and Anne are talking, and George says that Anne was gallivanting around Gay Perry. Didn't you just leave Robbie with me when you went gallivanting off in Gay Perry? Nora and Ricky's foster mom are also saying they think that John shouldn't be around George and Anne anymore because they fight too much, and they're afraid that Ricky and, and, and Amy are gonna end up like that. Surprise, they're already like that. While they're in the kitchen, talking shit about George and Anne, they hear sirens and they run outside. And George runs next door only to find that an ambulance has been called because Ben passed out. Ben is on a stretcher and George is like, hello, what's going on? He fainted, he just fainted. I don't think there's anything wrong with him. He didn't even hit the ground hard. His knees buckled and he just crumpled. I don't wanna go to the hospital. I I'm in no condition to go home. My throat hurts. I, I can't talk anymore. All right. Maybe one of us should ride with him. Huh? We now get another version of the trope of everyone texting each other, and word spreads fast that Ben is about to die. <laughs> Grace gets a phone call from Adrian, and Grace answers the phone by saying, I hope you're having a blessed day, because she's a Christian now. Hello, Adrian. Hope you're having a blessed day. She says that she's a Christian again because she's afraid she's gay because she kissed Adrian. And Adrian's like, what are you talking about? As I told you, I just think it's best if we're not friends, so I can't really talk right now. Yeah, you can. Amy and Ricky eloped. Really? Did you get that from a reliable source? Uh, yeah, my dad. So Grace hangs up with Adrian and calls Jack. And she says, Amy and Ricky eloped. And he says, I know. And she says, wait, how did you know? And, she, and he says, Tom told me. So Tom's told Jack that they've eloped, and Grace gets mad that Tom knew before her. So she rushes into the, the main house. She was in the guest house. She rushes in the main house and says, Tom, how'd you know about this before me? And Tom says, <laughs> I heard it from dad number three. How did you know that Amy and Ricky got married? I heard it from dad number three. Tweet. Meaning George. George is Kathleen's third husband since Tom has been around. Tom says he's allowed to judge anybody he wants because he's not a Christian, he's an American. Judge not. Oh no. We're free to judge you and everyone else because we are not Christian and this is America, damn it. Jacob, while they're sitting there, gets a text that says that Ben has had an aneurysm. This just in. Ben Borkevich had a heart attack. Ricky and Amy finally get home and they meet up with Ricky's foster brother outside who tells them that Ben has suffered from toxic shock syndrome to which Amy says, do you know what that is? And he says, yes, it's when your body is poisoned by bad news. Yeah, they brought him out of Adrian's house in one of those stretcher things. What happened? Isn't it a toxic shock following a brain aneurysm or heart attack or something? Toxic shock? Do you even know what that is? Yeah, it's like when your whole body's poisoned by bad news. Ricky and Amy come inside and they say, Sorry? What's that about? This cat. Ricky and Amy go inside and they say, Did Ben have a heart attack or an aneurysm? And everyone's like, No, Ben just fainted. We find out this episode that Ashley got into cooking school in Italy. So she is going to leave. She is heading out in like two days. In episode three, word has spread fast that Amy and Ricky have eloped. At this point, it's very implied that they didn't actually get married and they're just lying to everybody for fun. They get back to school and for some reason, a man at the door is passing out Ricky on a stick and he keeps saying Ricky on a stick, Ricky on a stick and it's pictures of Ricky on a stick. Ricky on a stick. Ricky on a stick. Ricky on a stick. Rick on a stick, Ricky on a stick, Rick on a stick, Ricky on a stick, Rick on a stick, Ricky on a stick. Dylan presents Amy with a giant wedding cake. Amy, meet us. We heard the good news. You got married finally, huh? Remember, Dylan's going to this school now because hers burned down, and apparently she still has to wear her uniform even though they go to the public school now, so okay. And Amy just takes the cake, and now she's wheeling the cake around for like the rest of the episode. Grace gives her a Bible, and she just takes it. Congratulations! I wanted to give you this gift from me. It's the book on which your vows are based. 
Then Madison and Lauren meet up with Amy in the hallway, and Madison's blonde. It's such a slay. She really slayed that one. Madison and Lauren are acting strange. They're wearing trench coats. They look like flashers, and they're like, hey, Amy, we'll see you later, and they go away. What are you so dressed up for? Why did you change your hair? Oh, um, well, you know what they say, that blondes have more fun. And then they come back in blue sequin dresses and sing Bruno Mars' I Think I Want to Marry You in a flash mob in the hallway. It's a beautiful night. We're looking for some of them things. Or is it this dancing dream? This is when we meet Kathy. She's played by the girl from the Fosters. I don't know her name. But the guidance counselor says, Amy, I have a freshman I want you to mentor. And Kathy walks in pregnant as fuck. Kathy? Hey. I somehow neglected to mention Kathy's costuming in this season. I wanted to put this here because I want you to pay close attention to how fake and awful her pregnant belly looks the rest of the season every single scene she's in it gets worse and worse every single time kathy is if you remember correctly the fourth pregnant woman that is a main character on the show we had amy adrian Anne, and now kathy there was also a couple side characters who were pregnant and all of those characters you would think by this point in season five where they clearly have a larger budget just based on the camera work and the sets and everything, that they would figure out a way to make Kathy's pregnancy belly not look like this. I don't know what the fuck happened with her pregnancy belly, but it is the worst fake pregnancy belly I have ever seen on a TV show. And, like, Amy's wasn't the best. That was season one. But it still wasn't this bad. Adrian's got better... And then Anne's, she was actually pregnant. That doesn't count. But still, like, I just don't understand how this was allowed to happen. They have these promo pictures from fucking Getty Images. Look at her fucking stomach. This is unbelievable. Like, it looks like they tied a balloon around her waist with a piece of string. It's just infuriating. Amy and Kathy go outside to talk, and Amy's like, how'd you get pregnant, bestie? I think it would be great if women could stop seeing themselves as victims so often, and and take responsibility and control of their lives. Kathy says something along the lines of, I am a victim. I had a nerdy boyfriend who said he knew the scientific method for pulling out, and he would do it on time, and now I'm pregnant. I was talked into having unprotected sex by my nerdy boyfriend, who convinced me he had a foolproof scientific birth control method, which depended on him stopping at just the right time. Another fertile girly to add to the wall. First time sex haver, baby haver. Back with Anne, she's with Mimsy, slay. Mimsy's such a slay. And Anne comes out to Mimsy. I'm gay. Of course. To which Mimsy says, remember George said this before, Mimsy says, oh, gay Paris. So apparently Paris turns people gay. Gay Paris. Paris. Gay. Mimsy tells Anne, my husband loved Paris. So that means he was gay, I think? Ben tells Amy he loves her. Why? What is happening? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. He's also just trying to get Dylan away from him because she's crazy. In his rage, this is not right. Ben goes to the guidance counselor and says that Omar, student teacher, is a pervert because he sleeps with students because he was with Adrian. And this is the first time that they address the existence of race in the Secret Life universe. Omar comes in for his interview about what happened, and he says, I am a young black professional. This could ruin my life. Ben's going to jail. Literally, what? Like, who does that? What the hell? Jack, Ricky, and Adrian are at the local college, and Jack's on the football team. And his football coaches are saying, that boy's a Christian. Adrian and Ricky meet up in the library and we find out that Ricky's going to business school and Adrian is going to be a lawyer. Jacob is, he's left. He's gone back to Zimbabwe. <laughs> Bye, Jacob. Tom, Kathleen, Grace, and George sit down to eat dinner. And Grace asks if she can pray because she's a Christian again. And they're all like, okay, fine, whatever. She starts praying about abstinence 
And while she's praying about abstinence, George and Kathleen start making out, and this makes her very upset. Those children whose parents are still children themselves and watch over all the families all over the world, would you guys please stop it? Back to the Nora, George, Ashley, Toby house, where Nora is eating dinner with Ashley and Toby and says, beans and weenies? And they're all saying, beans and weenies? It's beans and weenies. Or is it weenies and beans? Mm, beans and weenies. Ashley is like, okay, I'm out of here. I'm going to Italy on Sunday. And Toby says, I can't go to Italy on Sunday. I have to mow the lawn. I can't go to Italy on Sunday. I have to mow the lawn. At the end of this episode, we find out Amy and Ricky didn't actually get married. They went there and they have this video of the the officiant who is Leslie Jordan acting insane. And that's why they didn't get married. They just left. So they're not actually married. Got it, Dickie? That's Ricky. Ricky and Amy. Got it, Dick. Episode four. At the beginning of the episode, George walks into Ashley's room and finds two letters on the bed, one that says mom and one that says dad. He opens it and then just starts screaming, no! No! Ashley's gone and he thinks Toby went with, but Toby, the emotional king that he is, walks through the door with his own letter, crying. Gone. She's not our Ashley, she's my Ashley. And how the hell did she get the money to go to Italy? It's just very cute. I, I just really like Toby. There's also this weird scene where Leo says to Ben, here comes the plane. Here comes the plane. Grace comes to football practice and she is trying to tell Jack about Jesus. And Jack says, did you come here to witness to me? And she says, yes. <laughs> Jack says, I don't want to be a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim or a Republican or a Democrat or anything that I'm not. I'm not a Christian. I don't claim to be a Christian. I don't want to be a Christian or a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Republican or a Democrat. I would like to know more about his political leanings, but whatever. Because I care so deeply about each of you, my viewers, I have decided to answer the question posed to myself by myself during the recording of this video. Where would Jack be politically? While some may say I'm no expert, I would like to pose that I do in fact have a degree in political science, making me completely qualified to make arbitrary opinions on the political views of others. Now I have gone through each character and placed them where I, in my headcanon and in my opinion, they would fall on the political compass based on what I know about them, how I think they're going to end up after the show ends, and who I think they'd vote for, etc., etc. And I do think this could have been my political science thesis project. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're not here to talk about my degree in political science. What we're here to talk about is Jack, because Jack is the subject of this tangent after all. Jack in this clip says, I don't want to be a Democrat. I don't want to be a Republican. I don't want to be anything I'm not which left me thinking, what could he possibly be? Now, on one side of things, we have a leftist, which I consider myself. However, I do not think that Jack would be on the left of the Y axis. Do you see how I used a label there, even though I repeatedly got held back in math in high school? Yeah. Anyway, Jack is clearly going to be on the right of the axis. What we know about Jack is that he is Christian, he goes back and forth in his faith, he's very stupid, he loves God most of the time, and he plays football. He also treats women like shit. I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. If you take all of those things together, and you combine this with the fact that he's not a Democrat or a Republican, that only leaves one option. Yeah. Jack is clearly a libertarian, and a far right one at that. While Jack clearly flip-flops between what his beliefs are and what is okay and what isn't okay and where his moral compass lies during the course of the show, in my professional opinion, as a person with a political science degree, I believe that there is not one American who is situated politically that does this exact thing more than the bottom right libertarian men. I established my theocracy, I will throw you in my dungeon and let you rot for eternity. And isn't that beautiful? I do encourage you to 
take a closer look at this and read all of my comments. I worked very hard on it. Obviously, this is not the most nuanced thing. I'm making a political compass meme about a 2010s teen soap opera. I just know how the political fanboys will get when they see some of these and say, actually, that's not where the communists are. I don't care. It's just for fun. Enjoy the rest of the video. So then she moves on to Adrian. Corners Adrian in the bookstore to witness to Adrian because Jack wouldn't listen. This is Grace's evangelical era where she's trying to convert everyone. For that, she's going to jail because it's really annoying. With Ben, we find out that he is actually being charged for arson in the case of the burning down school. And Haley Duff is his attorney. I'm your attorney. Ben basically admits that he burned down the school. You know, arson cases are really hard to prove. Unless someone confesses. I didn't confess. Yeah, you kind of did. Fine. I just want to get it over with. <laughs> this is just starting. This is going to go on for months and months. The arson investigation might have come to a close this week if you hadn't confessed. Yeah, but I'd still be worrying day to day whether I had done the right thing. I can use that. That's the first thing that you've said that I could possibly use. This is, of course, not legal advice, but only for educational purposes. But arson is a specific intent crime, meaning you have to have the intent to burn something down in order to be charged with arson. So there is absolutely no possible way that Ben has confessed to arson, as they just turned the Bunsen burner on and left the school. They didn't even intend to leave the ben Bunsen burner on. He didn't intend to burn down anything. So there's no way that Ben has confessed to arson. But okay, Haley Duff. There's also another weird window scene in this episode. These people need to learn how to close their blinds. And we used to have cooking together. Do you remember we did after dinner? <laughs> Not after, that was before. Oh, that's right. And a couple of times during. <laughs> it's like seeing a jack-in-the-box in the window, isn't it? Is she waiting for us to tell her to come in or what? It's still her house. The beginning of episode five, we get Amy saying, I am comfortable with gay people, which seems like something someone who hates gay people would say. John also shows up with a handful of money and gives it to Ricky. Oh, thanks, John. <laughs> Wait a minute, where did you get this? John got the money from an envelope that was apparently in the mail that he opened and took the money out of. Mimsy, who is still in her dementia era, sent them $16,000 because she's senile and she heard they were getting married. Holy Toledo. Uh-oh. Grace walks into school, meets up with Grant. And remember, Grant is doesn't like Grace because she cheated on him with Daniel and then just left him. And Grant says to Grace, heard you were on vacation in lesbian land. That's pretty funny. I'm not putting him in jail for that. I also had a really good summer yeah i heard you went on vacation in lesbian land what i meant was i became a christian again i figured i heard that girl tell you to go to hell back at the college can we just make an agreement not to spend the next four years talking about sex have we not grown up at all during the last four years the coaches are planning something which they call operation tebow which is trying to get jack to say he's a christian before uh, the big game to boost his public image. We gotta get this Operation Tebow moving. Kathy is trying to get with Ricky's delinquent brother. Amy is being a cock block. He doesn't want, she doesn't want Kathy to get with the delinquent brother. Ben has apparently promised God that he would go to church if he got off of the arson charge. And because Leo and Puddin' Pop are very rich, they basically paid off his arson charge. So Ben's a Christian now, too. The beginning of episode six, Kathy and Ricky's brother are drinking milk in the car. Ricky's brother says that Kathy is the coolest girl he's ever met because she's drinking milk in the car. Okay, I'd put him in jail if he had a picture, but he doesn't. You are the coolest girl I ever met. Thanks. Why? Like, this is a first mention of milk, and now it's happened twice in, like, six episodes? Okay. Die! 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 Now, it's time for church. So, Alice, Ben, and Henry are there because Ben brought them. 
action is so personal. You know, his clothes are falling off, there's blood all over his head, and it's scary. I may not be a religious person, but I think the crucifixion is the most significant moment. That's why they chose it. Shouldn't it be the coming back to life moment? Stop, I beg you. We are not here for the two of you, we are here for me. Amy and Ricky are there, and they've brought Kathy and Ricky's delinquent brother. Adrian and Omar are also there. Adrian asks the kid in front of them to take a picture of her, and the kid takes a picture of them. He's he's really a sleigh. And then she says the word sex, and the kid freaks out. <laughs> oh, we look good together. Oh, and if the school board thinks you were with me just for sex, this could also be presented as evidence. What? You're done here. You said sex. We're in church, and you said sex. Oh, like Jesus never had sex. Never? Oh, come on. He never married. And? Ricky's brother is the organ player for today, and he starts playing baseball music. The pastor, who, again, is Jack's dad, because he's the only pastor in town, says, no, 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 you need to play this song. So he switches to God music, and then... Jack and Madison walk in the front door, the back door, I guess, of the church. Jack and Madison walk in, and everyone gasps that they're back together, and Ricky's brother starts playing baseball music again. For this scene, I feel like it would just be better for me to show you. <laughs> I didn't know there was going to be a seventh inning stretch. What a friend we have in Jesus. Page 23. that she doesn't want Anne at her wedding, not because she's gay, but because she's different than she was when Amy grew up. So it's because she's gay. And it's not because she's gay. It's because she's not the mother that I grew up with. I don't care if she's gay, but I care if she doesn't seem like my mom. For that, Amy's going to jail. Ben is getting back with Dylan for some unknown reason. Ricky, John, and Amy come back to their apartment and they know that George is there because his car is outside. And when they get inside, John keeps saying, Grandpa. <laughs> In episode seven, we find out that Omar has gotten off of the pervert charges. So he's allowed to be a student teacher still. We also find out that Kathy is a pick me. She says she doesn't like being friends with girls because they're, they're catty. Amy says, you should really find some friends that are girls. She's like, I don't like girls. And then some girls come up to Amy and bully her in the hallway, which is very funny. And Kathy decides she wants to be friends with those girls. And so she is. Whoa, well, actually, I wouldn't have taken the name Underwood either. It's totally lame. <laughs> yeah, it's gross. It sounds like underpants or something. Amy underpants? Who needs that? Not you. Not after being a teen mom and everything. Maybe I could be friends with you too. Yeah. I mean, I've been dying to ask you how you got pregnant. Kathy gets sleigh points. Grace comes up to Amy and says, hey Amy, I think we should be friends because people are prejudiced against Christians just as they are prejudiced against teen moms. It's just, it's really difficult to make friends because people are totally prejudiced against Christians. So I just thought maybe we could be friends. For that, Grace is going to jail. Any Christian who says this is lying and they want to be oppressed so bad that they have to use that as an excuse. Dylan and Ben, who are forbidden from dating because they set a school on fire, remember that? Yeah. So they've worked out a plan where Henry and Dylan will fake date and then when they get to the date, Ben will be there and it will just be Ben on the date. So Henry gets to Dylan's house and he's talking to Dylan's parents who are interrogating him about if he's good enough to date Dylan and they ask what Henry's parents do, and Henry says, my dad is a male nurse. What does your father do? He's a male nurse. Back at Ricky, Amy, and John's house, John is acting like a little bitch. <laughs> hey, John, say hi to daddy's friend Clementine. No. John is in his misbehaving arc. Mom told me not to, I did anyway, misbehaving. Everyone should go watch Righteous Gemstones on HBO. That show's so good. Anyway, every time someone's like, hey, John, do you want to do this? He goes, no. We're back at Ben, 
Leo and Camille's house, where, where Ben is explaining to Leo and Camille that he is heading out because he has to go to his date with Dylan, Camille actually just punches Ben in the stomach as hard as she can and he falls over. I just want to say that uh, if you think you can tell me who to date, I think I should have every right to tell you who to date. What? Yeah, and unless you plan on getting her pregnant or importing some offspring from some other source and adopting them, you should quit dating Camille. No offense, Camille. Are you drunk? No, I'm perfectly sober. Last time you married a hooker and I didn't speak up, this time I'm speaking up. You two do not belong together. You're too fat and she's too thin. She probably can't even get pregnant. If she could, she would have trapped you by now. Want to get married? Ow! Well? Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Henry kisses Dylan and says she deserves better than Ben. <laughs> I would put him in jail, but he's right. But also Dylan sucks, so I don't know, whatever. Grace and Jack are back together and they're on their Christian shit again. In episode eight, we're at school where Ben decides to hold court in the hallway and tell everyone that high school sucks. And he gets told off by some freshmen who say they love high school. And gather around. Come on, come, that's okay. You don't need a mentor. You don't need anyone to guide you through your first year here. No, just listen to my words and heed my warning. No good thing can come of this, of high school. You're gonna get uh, beaten up, maybe physically, but more likely emotionally, count on it. And even if you make friends, you'll lose friends. Even friends you've known since the third grade because this is the dumping ground of friendships and it's what high school does to people. It just chews them up and spits them out in little pieces and you spend the rest of your life trying to put those pieces back together again. So mark my words, you will leave here damaged and need therapy for the rest of your lives. Not that you'll get it. I'm on Ben's side this one time. Amy and George are at dinner talking about the whole gay thing and, and Amy's homophobia. And Amy says, I don't know if gays are born gay or not. I mean, I don't know if gays are not born gay. There could be a gene. Griffin and his two brothers are all gay. People want to believe gays are born gay, but to me that implies there's a reason that people are gay and that implies that there needs to be a reason. I don't like people blaming being gay on genetics or anything else because no blame needs to be assigned. Amy's going back to jail. She's really a homophobe, isn't she? Then Amy goes home and tells Ricky that she only wanted to get married because she was afraid people thought she was gay. She's literally so stupid. Episode 9 starts with Adrian in the college bookstore and a man approaches her and asks if she wants a job and it's highly implied that he's trying to traffic her. I run my own business. I was just thinking like an employer. I'm always thinking that way about jobs and money. Who needs a job? Who needs money? I don't need a job or money. All right. Well, if you ever do need to earn a little extra cash, I may have something for you. Or we could just go out and get to know each other a little better. And you look like a smart girl and you're beautiful. I don't need a job and I don't want to go out with you. Go away. Hard to get, huh? Is it just me or is this not total MLM vibes? Like, hey boss babe, it's me, girl from high school you were never really friends with, who got married to a man from the military as soon as we graduated. I run my own business. I get to work from home, make my own hours, and I'm my own boss. And you could be just like me. I don't need a job or money. You need to drop all the haters who think you're in a pyramid scheme. This is not a pyramid scheme. Look, I have product essential oils. The worker from the store comes up and says, get out of here and adrian's like who is that and the girl says he's a pimp he picks up girls to sell them a what a guy who sells women to guys wait he thought he was gonna sell me to guys later jack's sitting in his room just doing his homework and a random girl opens his door without knocking she says hey do you want some company i'll have sex with you for fifty dollars would you like some company uh no thank you Oh, come on. I just gotta make 50 bucks and then I'm done for the night. 50 bucks? I don't have 50 bucks. This is completely unprompted. He's literally just sitting there and she just walked in and asked him that. Not the smartest business move. And Jack is like, um, actually, no, I don't. But I'll give you money uh, because you need help. And the girl says, actually, I'm 15 and I've been sex trafficked. Why don't you just stay and we'll call the police, all right? You really are naive, aren't you? You call the police and he'll kill me. 
He'll get off and I'll be dead. Which is when the cops burst in the door and take a photo of Jack handing her money. So I thought this was meaning that he was gonna get charged <laughs> with paying for sex. The paper headline the next morning is Christian quarterback saves teen from life of prostitution. What? Okay. Ben Henry and Alice are all talking and making up, but they block it so that they're standing directly in front of the door to the girl's bathroom. And it's just a terrible set direction. Like, I don't know what they were doing. Well, well, well. If it's Episode 10. Jack is now fully Christian again because he saved a teen from a life of prostitution. And he gives an interview with Grace about how he loves abstinence and how sex ruined their relationship before. And now that they're abstinent again, it's going to be good. Were you surprised that your boyfriend here was caught with a prostitute in his rooms? I guess the two of you don't believe in premarital sex, do you? Do we believe that it exists? Yes. Do we believe that it's the best thing for us at this point in our relationship? No. So you two... You've never had sex with each other? No, we've had sex before, uh, a couple of years ago. But uh, it was great. But as it turned out, it wrecked our relationship. On camera, we are, we are on camera. Dylan's friends say the line, hookers are dangerous. They would be in jail if they could be. Drugs, arson, hookers, and pills. Throughout this entire segment, I somehow managed to miss the entire point of the scene. And upon rewatch, I realized that this is one of the funniest scenes of the show ever. The plot with Anne this episode is that Mimsy, her mom, who is in an old folks home, has been taught how to use email and Twitter. And now she is using email and Twitter to tell everybody she knows that Anne is gay. And she's constantly tweeting it and emailing it and trying to get Anne a girlfriend. Nora reads one of these emails and then this also becomes a recurring thing where people will mention Mimsy's emails and tweets about Anne being gay. Oh, so sweet. She learned to use email and she's got a Twitter account and she's on some <laughs> social network and you know what she's telling everyone? What? My mother is emailing and texting and tweeting everyone in the country that I'm gay. <laughs> Bless her little pea picking heart. Maybe you'll get a date for the wedding. What was that idiot nurse thinking and teaching all these old people how to email and text and tweet? Let's just take a we'll see attitude, all right? You need friends. Girlfriends. Lesbian girlfriends. Talk to Nora. So funny. Oh, Anne's mother, she's a riot. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Listen to this. 40-year-old lesbian with three children, 18, 17, and two, don't ask, looking for a date. Not good with long-term relationships. Neurotic. Can't cook. Big feet. <laughs> Small heart, newly gay, uh, has her own business and plenty of dough. <laughs> Hilarious, hi, Larius. Back at Leo's house, Leo and Camille are talking and they're going to adopt the hooker. The hooker that Jack saved. Es una niña. Chloe. Remember, she's 15 years old. They're doing this because there was a big fight about how Camille wanted children and Leo's like, Ben is literally 18, I don't want another kid. So they compromised, I guess. Anne then returns home and sees a bunch of women in her living room who all look really butchy. They all look really lesbian. She thinks that Nora has brought every lesbian in the entire Los Angeles area to her house. And she says, I'm not ready to date. And then Nora comes out and says that it's actually just the women from her AA meeting. But really, you, you can go now. I, I'm okay, really. <laughs> Would you like to stick around for the AA meeting? What? Ben and Amy both got early acceptance to a school in New York City. And this is a big deal. And at the very end of the episode, the pimp who was trying to traffic Adrian, who is also the pimp of Chloe. I run my own business. Comes and walks into Jack's room. These people need better security. He just walks right into Jack's the dorm room and beats the shit out of him with a bat. Yep. Start praying, Christian. Episode 11 begins with Jack in a hospital in a coma. He's going to be in surgery for hours because the man beat him within an inch of his life with a baseball bat. 
I run my own booth. Don't you keep a bat from Yankee Stadium in your night table drawer? They're so convenient. All, all you have to do is clunk one time with the killer. He also got away, and they don't know who it is. Tom and Tammy are now back together. So that's a really a slay. We love that for them. Someone calls George. I can't even remember who it is. And gets to his voicemail. And his voicemail says, Yo, it's me, George. Say something sexy, and I'll call you back. Yo, it's me, babe. Say something sexy, and I'll call you back. Anne is now having lesbian sex with Nora's AA sponsor, whose name is Willow Dean. We get a formal introduction to Chloe, who again is the woman that Jack saved. And Chloe is, her street name was Ginger, but now she's going by Chloe. She's being adopted by Leo and Camille. And apparently Ricky's foster mom is the only child welfare staff in the entire city because she's the one delivering Chloe to them. It's kind of a sleigh that she can run the entire child welfare system and be a foster mom. George runs into who else but the architect that Anne was, Anne was with in season two. And he's not alone because he has twins now, which means that his sperm wasn't broken. Robbie has been his child the entire time. And those two cuties? Those are your sisters? <laughs> Funny. How's your son? You have a son, right? Right. Well, give Anne my best. I think you might have done that already. Uh... What? Oh, by the way, Anne is gay. I got the email from Mimsy, and I follow her on Twitter. This episode, we also get the last Betty appearance ever. And it's because Betty is also a student on the college campus, and the college is shut down until they find the pimp because the pimp is violent. Tom calls Betty and says, Betty, you need to find the pimp because you know about pimps. And Betty's like, oh man, that's dangerous. And Tom's like, please. Do you know a pimp be up my body Jack? I saw the news earlier, but, but I didn't know that was Jack. They just said it was a student. They're also acting like Jack is dead, but he's not, he's just in a coma. Shall we pray? Episode 12 is a Christmas episode. Ricky and Amy having that daddy sex at a crazy old toy store downtown. They snuck in. Which is the very first Christmas episode we ever see in the entire show. So that's strange. We get yet another French horn story from Amy, who has now contradicted herself not once, not twice, not three times, but four times about why she started playing the French horn. Jack is in a coma and he's just laying there. Some girl who's like Ricky's old foster sister shows up because she has a crush on Jack and she says, every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Did you ever see the movie It's a Wonderful Life? Every time a bell rings, it's because an angel gets its wings. If you know me, you know I hate, I hate that movie so much. It's a Wonderful Life, God, I hate that movie. My notes say, every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings, die. <laughs> Grace, Tom, It's a Wonderful Life Girl, they all decide that they're going to take Jack's comatose body to the Christmas building, which is where Ricky and Amy are. It's just a big building filled with wonderful Christmas things, and they're playing with John there. He's in a wheelchair, just like in a coma, and they wheel him out of the hospital, and a cop stops them and is like, what are you doing? And they're like, we're taking him to see the Christmas miracle. Please, please don't make us put him back. I really think it would be good for him to get out. It's Christmas. Yeah, and I'm not getting fired on Christmas Eve. Look, I'm sorry, but you can't just steal a patient. Now, you go get him checked out legitimately, I'll be the first one to help you out, but I'm sorry, Tuts. I am actually completely obsessed with the fact that if you take this out of context, this becomes an actual unedited clip from a TV show. I'm oh, sorry, Tuts. Back at George and Kathleen's residence, Kathleen is dressed as sexy Mrs. Claus. And then we're going to church. Tom says, hey, Jack, do you want some cookies? And Jack wakes up and says, cookies sound good. And then he immediately goes back to sleep when, he when Tom tells him it's Christmas Eve. Cookies? Yeah, I'll have some cookies. I'm hungry. 
How long have I been asleep? A long time, buddy. Wow. What's today's date? It's Christmas Eve. It's Christmas Eve? Oh my god. I don't think that's how comas work, but okay. Kathy is in labor. She's brought into the hospital like the Virgin Mary, dressed as the Virgin Mary, on top of a donkey. Leo bought Ben, Henry, and Alice matching Camaros. This is insane. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Clay to wait your parents not to worry. <laughs> Jack wakes up because it's Christmas now so he can wake up. Jack, you want cookies? Cookies? Yeah. And Kathy has her baby and she gives it up for adoption just like she said she would. In episode 13, Kathy decides she's going back to Texas because she was only supposed to be here for when she was pregnant. So she's like, okay, bye. Amy is in her wedding dress and it's very ugly and also horribly stained and it looks like it came out of the coffin. And Ricky tells her so and she gets mad. Five dollars at a thrift shop. Isn't it great? I mean, when it's cleaned up. She then goes on a tour to show her dress to everyone and they all agree that it's really ugly, although some of the women are like, okay, you got that for a deal, that's a slay. George, back at home, starts hitting on Anne's girlfriend, Will Willow Dean, because he thinks he can turn lesbians straight, which is funny because Anne actually became a lesbian after being married to him. That's right, you really are an idiot. Do you actually think that a gay woman would sleep with you just because you'd get a kick out of it? Apparently a gay woman slept with me for years just because I got a kick out of it. Okay, you are funny. I will sleep with you. Really? Never. Uh, Anne now knows that Robbie is not biologically George's child, and they get in a fight about how George raised him, so it's still his child. You weren't around, so? He's my son by default. You mean to tell me you've known all along that Robbie is my son? You left. I stayed. I stayed with a gay woman. That's what a good dad I am. Th this plotline is completely unnecessary. Amy, while she's on her wedding dress tour, she wants Ben to see her wedding dress, so she sends him a mirror selfie. And it's a really bad selfie. You can't even see the dress. Have you showered or bathed in the last couple of days? No, because you don't have running water right now? Okay. Ethan has followed Kathy to Texas. Ethan is the brother. <laughs> Ethan is Ricky's brother. He's followed Kathy to Texas to try to convince her to come back. In episode 14, we get a very boring episode. It's more drama about Robbie and Kathy and Ricky's brother. Ricky is in therapy with Lauren's dad, of course, as he's the only mental health professional in town. And Ricky says to him, I think maybe I deserve better than Amy. To which I say, yes, you do, Ricky. Jack says that he has been called by God. He is going to become a minister now because God saved him. Hey, so, so you want me to drive you to the secular doctor? Nope, I'm good. I got uh, Jesus as my co-pilot. Why would anyone think Jesus could drive or co-pilot or whatever? Was Jack able to drive the car after the accident? They wouldn't let him drive in his conditions. Omar says he wants to be a teacher and Adrian's like, that's not gonna fly because I wanna be rich. And Omar's like, I don't care. <laughs> Jack says he doesn't need to go see the psychologist because his brain isn't broken from the attack, only his bones are, and his bones are healed now. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, are you taking your pain meds? I don't need to take my pain meds. Uh, my bones are healed. Would you come in and talk to me? About what? I don't need a psychiatrist, I just need a saw. Dumb shit. Ethan and Kathy are now back, and Kathy's gonna stay here. In episode 15, this is another boring one, Willow Dean thinks that Anne has a crush on Nora, and also she's telling Nora that she has a crush on Anne, so that's okay. Okay, some lesbian drama for you there. Kathy and Chloe are becoming besties. They're so, like, inconsequential. Why, why, why did they choose to introduce these two characters that have such, like, 
fruitful plot lines at this point in the series. Like, it makes no sense at all. Episode 16 begins with Ricky having an intense dream about cheating on Amy, and he feels guilty. Two. And again. I got this as a special prize it's for getting pregnant. George and Nora are talking, and George says that he got a Manny Petty, and it's very metrosexual of him. Suits are never good. Why are you in a suit? Get used to it, sister. I just reinvented myself again. Reinvented again. Reinvented again. That's right. Isn't that redundant? No, I've never been here before. I've entered the world of the metrosexual. What do you think? I think I prefer the world of the homosexual. I know what that is. I'll tell you what metrosexual is. I had a Manny Petty yesterday. Buff. That's kind of homosexual, in my opinion. Well, metrosexual is pretty much a straight homosexual now, isn't it? All right, I'll go with that. And I like the look. What are you going to do with it, Mr. Metrosexual? I'll let you know. You want to meet me at Jeff's for dinner? For what? Oh, just tell me now. I hate to go out to dinner. Then don't come. We'll do it some other time. That's right. I've got a secret, and the only way you are going to get in on it is if you come to Jeff's. Yeah, that's what I meant. What did you mean? I mean I've been shaved, waxed, and plucked, and I'm ready to take on the world all shiny and new. So you're saying you're a male prostitute now? Ho, <laughs> don't they wish? They who? The ladies. George also sings. I gotta run. Got the world on a string. Sitting on a rainbow. You're not gonna be sitting so pretty when we're homeless. Ricky goes to Leo to talk about his future, and Leo apparently, between the last time we saw him and now, has gotten the darkest spray tan known to man. Good morning. I wasn't expecting you. Something happened to Norm. I, seriously, they started this scene and I thought it was going to be a joke that he had like gotten a bad tan, but it's never explained. So I think the actor just got a, a really dark tan and they like didn't feel the need to explain it at all. And they don't mention it. George has also bought the only restaurant in the entire city, and Ben, Amy, and Omar are all on the same flight to New York City. Ben and Amy are going to visit college, and Omar is apparently presenting some proposal for teaching technology that's going to make him a very rich man. What's your favorite neighborhood? I like Little Italy. Mm, me too. Although my favorite Italian restaurant is in the Lower East Side. Mine too. Mine too, mine too. And at the very end of this episode, we see Tom and George showing up to the guest house to talk to Jack. And they knock on the door and George says, Jack, it's me, open up. Jack gets out of bed and shoots at George. He pulls out a gun and shoots because Jack is mentally disturbed since he got attacked. Jack wants to sleep over. I don't care if he sleeps over, poor guy. Never knows he has a problem, he knows it too. Very scary what he went through. I know, but he won't talk to anyone. I'll talk to him. You go get those brownies your mom always has under that cake thing. Jack, it's me. Open up. Come on, we're going to my house. Don't shoot! It's me, George! Oh, no. I'm... Episode 17 begins with George screaming at Jack's dad because Jack just tried to shoot him him to go to therapy he'll go when he's ready to go he's not ready oh no he's ready he almost killed me george then takes jack to lauren's dad the psychologist and says you need help let's talk about it amy calls ricky and ricky says hey john do you want to talk to mommy and john says no john mommy's on the phone want to talk to mommy no also we find out that john bit someone at daycare so slay points I'm starting to love John. He bit a kid. The kid bit him first, but that kid was only two, so. This one is Boo Boo. Are you grumpy? He's so cute. The next scene we see Leo, he's no longer tan. So that furthers my theory that it was just the actor. At the end, we see Jack sleeping in his parents' room because he needs help healing from his mental anguish. He's finally able to talk. Yeah, but still. In episode 18, Amy and Ben, because they applied early decision, 
they have actually already signed a contract agreeing that they'll go to the school in New York. She says, okay, well, if I live in the dorms, can my son visit? And the guy says, no, children aren't allowed at all. You formally accept it when you sign the application. Not really. No, really. There was a $2,000 application fee. It's very high because we want to make sure the students asking for early acceptance are serious. Okay, I guess I didn't understand that. A summer course in reading comprehension might be prudent. Well, that's not going to work. She has to figure something out stat. Betty, she's not back, but her strange lawyer she met at the airport, remember him? He approaches Jack and says Jack should sue the college for negligence because he got attacked at school. Why is that? The Lord has blessed me with a lot of good friends, you know. I'm getting a lot of good advice from a lot of good people. Are you getting any financial help? I don't need any. Two words. Punitive damages. The school wants to punish me. They want me to pay them. Oh, no. You want to punish them. Kathy has given her baby up for adoption. So that's all done. Her baby daddy shows up and says, hey, I want the baby. And she's like, you can't have it. There's literally no, like, what's the point of this plot? It seems like they, they really felt like they had to keep the teen pregnancy in there, but like they didn't really know how. No one's done anything particularly egregious lately, so Amy can stay in jail because she's annoying. In episode 19, Amy is sleeping on Ben's shoulder on the airplane and he takes her wedding ring off her finger so he can pretend that they're together. I just said Amy's in jail, Ben's going to jail now. Like who does that? Omar actually just got a job in New York and it's made him very rich overnight. His proposal went really well and he is moving to New York and he wants Adrian to come. And she says she wants to come, just not yet. Leo finds out about the dorm debacle and he says he's gonna buy Ben and Amy an apartment in New York where they can live as, as roommates when they go to college. Kathy is trying to help Ricky's brother learn algebra and they decide that algebra isn't useful to real life, so they start taking a poll door to door, asking adults if they've ever used algebra in real life. And there's a strange scene where they go to some woman's door and she opens it and Kathy says, hey, I know you. And Ricky's brother says, oh, I know you too. Are you a porn star? But it turns out she's an actress who writes math books. So now Kathy's mad at him. Are you Danica McKellar? Yes, I am. Danica McKellar? I know that name. Are, are you a stripper? A what? What are you doing? I'm complimenting the lady. She's an actress and a mathematician. She writes books on math. Math doesn't suck. Kiss my math. Hot X. Girls get curves. <laughs> All I get from that is something dirty. He had his bones broken and his head smashed in. And now you're going to stomp all over his heart? I don't think so. Jack's mom, who we've seen almost none, comes to visit Grace. And she is manipulating Grace by saying that Grace can't break up with Jack because Jack's already suffered enough from getting beaten up. She's serving boy mom slay and being a manipulative, a little bit weird, incesty vibes mom. He had his bones broken and his head smashed in. And now you're gonna stomp all over his heart? I don't think so. Chloe and Ben got in a fight this episode because Ben said something rude to her. So like, she he probably deserved it. They make up later because Chloe says, sorry, I was having PMS earlier. That happens a couple hours every month. Oh, yeah, sorry, PMS. <laughs> what? I get that way for a couple hours every month, but it's just a couple hours. At the end of this episode, Kathleen's mom shows up and she's a frigid bitch. Hi, mom. Please tell me you're not back to ground zero. In episode 20, this is all about the moms. The moms of the moms. So Frigid Bitch is here and she comes and shits all over Kathleen's house and it's because she hates George and she's always hated George apparently. What happened to the wallpaper? Who needs wallpaper? Before it looked like a home, now it looks like an institution. I again ask 
why they introduced a brand new character two episodes from the end. Kathleen's mom also comes in and just starts saying some really homophobic and transphobic things for no reason, and George is on his gay rights sleigh again and tells her off. She's gay. She's gay? She sure is, and proud of it, and I'm proud of her. Oh, really? What are you wearing to the parade? Anything I want, and I'm taking Kathleen with me. Hoping to turn her gay, too? You can't turn straight into gay any more than you can turn a witch into a warlock. Actually, I think you can do both. But I am not interested in discussing conversion therapy or transsexual surgery with you. It's called gender reassignment surgery. Sit down, I'll get you a drink. Oh, that's right, you don't drink. Love him. Grace and Jack come in and tell everyone they're engaged. Right, this is right after Grace was thinking about breaking up with Jack, but got manipulated by his mother to not do so. Hi. Who are you? Well, um... I'm Jack. I'm, uh... I'm Grace's... Uh, fiance. Adrian and Omar are also engaged at this point. George's mom shows up too, and this is the first time we ever see her, and she looks like a lesbian. She's apparently been traveling the, the world. Amy and Ashley haven't seen her since they were children. Mommy? Georgie. <laughs> Kathy goes to sit by Amy and Grace at lunch, and she complains to them about Ricky's brother saying that he's like bothering her, and they both say, boo, dump him. And they say this because they're also thinking about dumping their boyfriends. <laughs> Ethan is driving me crazy today. I can't even be friends with another guy without him getting in the middle of it. Then break up with him. Yeah, you're really too young to have a boyfriend. You should just like play the field. There's so many nice guys out there. Not that you even need a guy. I'm sorry. Wrong table. Kathleen's mom is back at the house organizing things and she's dressed like a pioneer. Why do you always choose men who cheat on you? Get to know you. I have a pioneer face. So I feel her on this one. I look great in a bonnet, and this woman is serving pioneer slay. She's serving pionessy. Pi yeah, pionessy. Grace goes to school the next day, and Grant says, I'm going to Harvard. I got into Harvard, and Grace freaks out and says, I'm smarter than you. Why are you going to Harvard and not me? I'm going to Harvard. What? Wow. That is so it's fair. I earned it. I made the grades. I went to med camp every summer. How is it not fair? You're just trying to make me jealous. Jealous of what? Of my school? Yes, you didn't even want to go to Harvard. Yeah, I did. Yeah, well, so did I. Then you should have applied. I did. I didn't get in. Oh, my God. I don't believe this. I am so much smarter than you. No, you're not, because I don't let relationships in high school interfere with my life plans. She's going to jail for that one. George's mom is now at the house, and she's telling Amy she turned out nice. She's my mother. <laughs> Amy, you turned out nice. Grandma? What? Wait, I thought you were living in a biosphere over in Sweden. I was, for a while. Too confining, though. I had to hit the road. George and Kathleen are also about to get married in their living room with their moms there. Wait. I felt the same way at my wedding. Me too, but I did it anyway. And Kathleen looks really, really hot. Ethan, if you two would face one another, please. I swear she like aged backwards as the show went on. The episode ends with Kathleen going to her mom's guest room door and knocking and saying, Mom, 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 no answer. It's implied that she's not answering because she's dead. It's like a cliffhanger. Mom? Are you up? Mom? You want some breakfast? Mom? Episode 21 starts with Kathleen, George, and Tom walking in the door from a funeral. Kathleen's mom did in fact die. Wow. That was deep fancy. It's a funeral, Tom. That's supposed to be fun. Yeah. Well, I'm glad Grandma wasn't there to see it. No one came. Why? Why, 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 why? They come from the funeral because uh, Kathleen's mom has died. <laughs> and she says at least she accepted George before she died. So, okay, that's fine. John is being an absolute demon. He's jumping up and down on the furniture and screaming. And when Ricky tells him to stop, he runs away. Sit down. No. Sit 
Then you're going to bed. I live for John's demon arc. George's butch mom is sitting at the kitchen table with Tom and they're talking and Tom is like, I've always wanted a grandma. And George's mom says, well, I'm going to go travel. Do you want to come with me? And Tom's like, hell yeah, I do. So they go to visit George and tell him that they are going to go to Alaska together on a motorcycle. And George is like, wait, I want to come. And George's mom says, you can't. You're a married man now. And he's like, oh, you're right. Hey, kiddo. We're taking off. Just wanted to let you know. Hey, you let my mother know. And by taking off, you mean what? Spin around the neighborhood? Salmon fishing in Alaska. <laughs> I've got some friends up there. Oh, no, no. You cannot go to Alaska. Why not? It's a beautiful ride. We're going to see the redwoods on the way up. Your eyes are not deceiving you. I have, in fact, added a line of romance slash sexual contact from Ben to Chloe, his adopted sister who is 15. <sighs> Chloe has decided she's in love with Ben and she is trying to seduce him. And in my opinion, Ben isn't resistant enough to this seduction. Although he does shut her down, Ben walks into Chloe's room and she's wearing like no clothes and she's like, have sex with me, Ben. Hi, brother Ben. Uh, I just want to talk to you about, do you want to put something over that? Why? Because that's, that's a little, <laughs> little. I like you, Ben. You know that. And I can make you forget all about Amy Jergens. Good night. Wait. Chloe's 15. Ben is at least 18 because he's about to graduate. The age gap alone is suspicious, but also may I point out that Chloe is his adopted sister who's been living as his sister for all year. My theory is this specific plot line is what caused the, um, the rise in American interest in stepsister porn. All right, sis. All right, bro. All right, sis. All right, bro. In lesbian land, Nora is now dating Willow Dean, her sponsor, who was with Anne. <laughs> this is total lesbian moves. Dating your friend's ex-girlfriend. But good to see you're still keeping it in the family. It's my fault. No, it's not. It's my fault. I, I don't love you. I love her. I love Nora. And I didn't realize that till after we got together. Chloe then calls her pimp, you know, the one who beat up Jack, and says, hey, it's Ginger. Hey, it's me, Ginger. I knew you'd call me, Toots. Those people aren't your family. I run my own business. I'm putting Ben in jail because he, he, of the stepsister thing. Episode 22, all the girls are breaking up with their boyfriends or seriously thinking about it. Adrian breaks up with Omar which is sad because he's the best thing that's ever happened to her. Grace is seriously considering breaking up with Jack, although she doesn't yet. And Amy is thinking about leaving Ricky. And you know, I don't think you should get everything that you want. I mean, after all, you always wanted Ricky and then you got him and I suspect you don't want him. And that's why I'm going to New York. Chew on that one. Episode 23 is the second to last episode. The episode starts with Ben telling Alice that he thinks Amy is still in love with him. And Alice says, how do you know that? And Ben says he's been reading Amy's e-diary. Right. Alice tells Amy ben, Ben's been reading her e-diary. Do you have an e-diary? Uh, what if I do? Oh no. Amy chases Ben down the hall and Football tackles him to the ground and says, you read my diary. Ben, hey, Ben, hey, Ben, I want to talk to you. You read my diary. Uh, I'm going to say something I never thought I'd say. You want to get off me? And they have some weird dialogue about how Ben was only able to read her diary because her password was Wings. Oh, uh, I was flattered that the uh, password was Wings, though. We ate a lot of Wings together. Call back to the Wings. Look really good. <laughs> and also apparently Amy was writing some stuff about still being in love with Ben in her e-diary. There's not much more there, but it seems like maybe they're gonna get back together, even though Amy's still with Ricky. Later, Alice, Henry, and Ben are at Ben's house, 
and Henry is in a military uniform. Anything is possible in the army. Apparently Henry signed up for the military months ago. Alice says that she hates the military because of internment camps. So she's gonna get sleigh points for that. However, directly after she says that, she says she now likes the military because Henry's in it. So I'm taking those sleigh points right back away. This country put my people in internment camps during World War II and took away all their money and land. America's not without flaws, but I want to be the best I can be so America can be the best that she can be. And on behalf of the armed forces, I apologize to your family. It was an overreaction. And then Leo comes in and he's also pro-military. So him and Alice are congratulating Henry about being so brave. And Ben starts saying things like, you know this isn't a video game, you're gonna get killed. And Henry's like, shut up, Ben. Dad! This isn't like a video game. It's the real army, you can get killed. There's no next level. Well, good for you. Especially when you got nincompoops like Ben here who have no idea of the sacrifice you're about to undertake. Your parents on board with this? Yes, sir, Mr. Boykovich, sir. I could get killed. But what if no one was willing to take that risk to defend our country? Where would we be? Alive? Overpopulated, even? I'm actually gonna put Henry in jail for going to the military, and Ben is actually getting some slay points here for once in his life. This isn't to say I have anything against the military in concept. Actually, I do. I don't have anything against people who feel that they need to go to the military because I think in concept the idea of protecting the country and serving your country is a good one, so I respect that. However, military institution as it exists is horrifically corrupt and awful. What I don't respect is the institution. We also this episode get a scene of Jack telling Grace that he told God that if he survived the attack, he would marry Grace. He's God-pilled, and Grace feels extra guilty because apparently God told him to marry her. When that guy was beating the crap out of me, I made a promise to God that if he let me live, that I would marry you. In my opinion, Jack and Grace need to get their religious OCD checked out. And I say that as somebody with OCD. Mm, it seems a little sus. Remember Chloe called the pimp? Turns out she was actually setting up a sting operation and the pimp shows up to beat her up and the cops arrest him. So he's now in jail. Miss me? Because I missed you. I love you, baby. Come on, Ginger. Do you want to make your own hours and work from home? Stop right there! You are so stupid. Episode 24 is the final episode of the show. And it is also the worst episode of the show. It goes back and forth between real life and the past. Everyone who hasn't graduated yet is graduating. Amy and Ricky are to get married tomorrow morning. Madison and Lauren are going to Berkeley together, which I'm a bit confused about because Madison's really stupid and that's been her whole character. And they say that they're gonna be besties with Amy forever. Bye. Best friends forever. <laughs> Madison walks by Jack and Grace in the hallway and tells Jack if he ever gets bored of Grace to call her. Do you get bored? That's a sleigh. Grace and Jack go home and Grace breaks up with Jack. As soon as he leaves, she starts once again dancing by herself. <laughs> Adrian are back together and it's very cute because Adrian is packing all her stuff. She's moving to New York to be with Omar. It's cute and I like them together a lot. You can get into school in New York. Let's go. <laughs> Leo is talking to Ben and he says, your mom. In context, it makes sense, but if I cut it how I'm about to, it's very funny. Who did you ever want that you didn't get? Your mom. Amy and Ricky are fighting. It's the next morning and Amy's decided to call off the wedding and leave and go to New York for the summer slash forever. She'll decide later and leave John with Ricky, abandon her child and her fiance 
She's not getting married. She's just going to leave. Amy's in her deadbeat mom era, and that's why she's going to jail. I love you, Amy. I know that you love me, Ricky. But you weren't in love with me. Amy's in her deadbeat mom era, and that's why she's going to jail. Amy talks to her parents for a second, but then she leaves. And we see Ricky and John on the couch with Ricky telling John, we'll live our happily ever after too. And then the show ends. And she lived happily ever after. What is that? What the hell is that? <laughs> this is truly perhaps the worst finale of any show I've ever watched. We do get an epilogue from Brenda's mouth years later, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but as the show ends, this is our final canon chart. So let me go over some of how the show ended and like where we're at when the show ends. Madison and Lauren are headed to Berkeley. Fine. Leo and Camille are married. Betty's still in college. Henry's going to the army, unsure what Alice is doing. Dylan is out of the picture. She has been for a while. Maria, she was only there for a bit. Mercy, may she rest in peace. Kathy is back staying at the school with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend, Jack, is in college already, so he's just going to stay in college. Adrian is moving to New York with Omar. Daniel hasn't been mentioned in a very long time. Cindy and Ruben live next door to George. Ben and Amy are now together and going to college together. Ashley is at cooking school in Italy, and we are to assume that Toby followed her. Mimsy still has dementia. Griffin and Grant. Grant's going to Harvard. Griffin was forgotten about. Anne is single. And she is with Robbie, who is her child and not George's child. And Nora is with Willow Dean. Ricky has been left with John. He's now a single father and he is going to college. Grace is going to school somewhere. I don't know where, but I think it's like somewhere outside of California. Tom and Tammy are back together. Marshall's dead. Jacob's in Zimbabwe, although Kathleen says she thinks he'll come back. Jeff is also still in Zimbabwe. <laughs> like, I have no words for this finale. It's so bad. And the fans were outraged by it when it happens. Highs and lows of this season. I think Grace's Christianity was, like, pretty funny for me, but I also think it was, like, bordering on Christian propaganda because we know Brenda loves Christians. There were many unnecessary plot lines, like completely unnecessary. I don't know if the show got canceled like in the middle of them filming and they had to turn it around or something, but like Betty needed to be in it a lot more and she needed a proper goodbye. She didn't get one. The last she got was talking to Tom on the phone. I do kind of wish Nora and Anne got together. I kind of like that, but they didn't. I also wanted Ashley to have a more like wrapped up plot line. Adrian and Omar I'm happy about. In my perfect world, Amy and Ben got on an airplane to go to New York and it crashed and they both died. That is the end of Secret Life of the American Teenager. I can't believe it. I, may, I might be about to die. I'm gonna pause this. Are you threatening to spank me? But we're not done yet because Brenda Hampton, creator of the show, made her own epilogue. And she made a canon when she gave an interview with MTV at Megan Park, who is Grace, Megan Park's wedding. And she told us what happens to all the characters. She is on her JK Rowling bag of post-canon canonification. The canacy, if you will. So here's what Brenda said about our characters' fates, and somehow she made it worse. Amy stayed in New York City after the summer. So Ricky, John, and George, who all are missing Amy, 
moved to New York City and they live in an apartment together, all three of them, so that they can be close to Amy. She says absolutely nothing, not one thing, about George and Kathleen being married. George is just moving to New York with Ricky and John and that's just how it is. I will say I would absolutely love a spin-off of Ricky, George, and John living together in New York City. Leo helped Ricky get transferred to a business school in New York so he finishes his degree and graduates and then Leo also moves, moves, Leo also moves to New York. Amy and Ricky fell in love again and get married eventually and they move into an apartment together with John and George moves across the hall. This is all canon according to Brenda. Anne is happily married to herself so her lesbian arc was for nothing. She's not, she didn't end up with a woman. And she's singing in jazz clubs across the world. Please, God, make it make sense. It doesn't make sense. Nora has moved to New York, if you can believe it, and she's moved in with George across the hall from these three because they're such good besties that they just like living together, which is fine. It just doesn't make sense because what happened to Kathleen? Amy eventually graduates and she becomes a famous documentary maker. She's probably making anti-abortion documentaries like the LeBrant family. Ricky and Leo partner up as business partners because remember they have like this father-son vibe going and they are working on creating a high-end fast food chain. Unclear what that means but when they say high-end fast food all I can think is that they've created Chick-fil-A, which seems homophobic. So Amy and Ben, if you remember, they were together at the end of the show. And Brenda says that they hooked up a couple of times, they had sex, and the first time it was bad, so they decided they needed to try again, and it was bad again, so they decided to just be friends. As for what Ben is doing, he apparently wrote his first novel while he was in college, and it's a bestseller. And his novel is based on Amy. He's also pursuing a doctorate in literature while he writes his next novel. Grace is at med school at NYU, which, okay, slay. Madison is on Broadway, right, right, okay, after going to Berkeley, okay. And Jack is a football coach, and Jack and Madison ended up married. Kathleen and Tom also moved to New York. Kathleen is a fundraiser for a church on the Upper East Side. Who's paying her rent, Bestie? Because I know that can't pay enough to pay New York rent. And Tom works at a museum. There's, again, no explanation of what happened to George and Kathleen's wedding or marriage. Brenda tells us that Adrian and Omar are happily married and they are the most successful financially of the group. And they have two very cute kids, which I believe, I believe they have the cutest kids and he continues to revolutionize education and she is finishing law school. She's a girl boss. After that, that obviously left more questions than answers, um, but I will say it did wrap up the plot lines better than the finale did, so at least there's that. So we've come to the end of our journey here together. And let me remind you how it started. They call me Megatron, just said a telethon. He got my jealous on and I get my jealous on. For my final trick, Welcome to my last video interruption. I just know that I personally could come up with better, more realistic, and more fulfilling endings for each of these characters. So I put my storytelling to the test and now I'm going to present them to you in a movie style montage slideshow of a like where did they end up, where are they now kind of thing. It's gonna be fucking epic. I do think that my version of what happens should take precedent to Brenda's version of what she thinks happens because she ended up just disgracing every single one of her characters and going back on all of the character building she did over the whole show. So I'm raising them from the dead and bringing them new life with my endings. I have tried my very best to keep it as unbiased as possible. Obviously there's characters I dislike but I tried to think of endings that I think the characters would actually have rather than just some funny shit I thought of in my head or if I really hate a character just making them like die. I don't know if I'm allowed to joke about this but 
one of the ideas I was tossing around with myself was to have Ben and Amy get on to Malaysia Flight 370. However, I decided to go a different direction. Finally, Brenda, if you would like to duel me, if you would like to fight, um, just let me know. Let me know the time and the place, and I will be there, queen. Just let me know. Hi, I'm Sarah McLaughlin, and your donation to the ASPCA can spend all your time waiting for that second chance. Oh, Sorry, Mr. Boyd, that's just something wrong. Yeah, that was okay. it. Oh, totally. I think it's wrong. To feel not good enough. And it's hard at the end of the day. I need some distraction. Oh, beautiful release. Memories seep from my face. Let it be the ending. Or a weightless and maybe I'll find some peace tonight. In, in the arms of the angel. Fly away <laughs> from me, from this dark, cold tunnel, and the endlessness that you feel. You are pulled from the wreckage of your silent dream. When you're in the arms of the angel, they will find find. Something to hear. Ben. Amy? Adrian's asking if she can please see you. You're tired of straight lines. And everywhere you turn. This ball chest of thieves at your back. The skull keeps on twisting. Keeps on building the lies. That you make up for all that you lack. It don't make no difference. Escape one less time. Easier to clean this sweet madness. Oh, this sweet madness. Oh, this glorious sadness. It brings me to my knees. In the arms of the angel, fly away from here. In this dark, cold hotel room, spend all your time waiting for that second chance. Sorry, Mr. Boyd, that's just something wrong. Yeah, that was it. Oh, totally. I think it's wrong. To feel not good enough. And it's hard at the end of the day. I need some distraction. Oh, beautiful release. Memories seep from my face. Let it be the ending. Oh, and wait, let and maybe I'll find some peace tonight. In the arms of the angel, fly away <laughs> from me, from this dark, cold tunnel, and the endlessness that you feel. You are pulled from the wreckage of your silent dream. When you're in the arms of the angel, they will find. Find some something to hear. Ben. Amy? Adrian's asking if she can please see you. You're tired of straight lines. And everywhere you turn. This ball. All right, we're right outside of Van Nuys Courthouse. I got my great client here. He was charged with a second time DUI. Uh, he admittedly overdosed on multiple different drugs that night. It caused a drug induced psychosis. He crashed with two other cars on a freeway and flipped over a few times. Luckily, everyone made it out all right. Um, the fire department came with the police, used the jaws of life, dragged him out of the car. He started fighting with them. They charged him with resisting arrest also. Um, Fly away from here in this dark, cold hotel room. This is a dramatic reading of a comment someone left on the Secret Life of the American Teenager wiki, a fandom user writes. So Ben ended up alone and Amy didn't want him because he wasn't pretty enough. Leo stayed Santa Claus and as usual, the more attractive guys got it all. Ben should leave New York and kill Amy off in his books. Then move to California away from these selfish users and his bastard father. 
Brenda pleased the Rainyverse and proved she is a hypocrite with no morals and explained why many actors, actresses, writers, producers, and directors refuse to work with her and her stupidity about people. But considering she takes most of her ideas from idiots she's related to without thinking about researching it, I'm not surprised. The fact that an incel was mad enough to write that about the secret life of the American teenager was pretty funny to me. If you made it this far, truly congratulations and truly thank you for watching. I hope I did okay. This is my first ever video. If you would like to see more videos from me, just let me know because, <laughs> I mean, seriously, twist my arm. I'll probably do it if one person says so. I've got lots of ideas for fun video essays. I like to talk about society. We live in a society, but I'm, I'm chock full of ideas and I love wasting my time. You know, happy to comply with whatever anyone would want. So just let me know. Today I'm going to leave you with the fan edits that I made of Ricky and George, my favorite characters from the entire series. Thank you so much and I will see you next time. This is the last time you're going to hear me singing a song that I'm afraid will get copyrighted. I'm so sorry. I will be posting these originals somewhere else so you can see them, but you'll get the idea with my singing. You know what? These bitches are mean. Why? Because they don't give a fuck. What to do? I've been fixing the weed by sucking my dick full of that titty fuck. Uh, uh. I fuck up from the back of the net and some chill notes. You know how I give it up? Yeah. Yeah, I be cool enough, bitch, no press. Uh -huh. Still met this little freaker named Megan. Ooh. This little nigga is telling. Look how she walk. Look how she talk. Fine, she I, go without my shirt. I like when they pretty and ghetto. Uh -huh. Type of bitch that don't even say hello. Yeah. And whenever yeah. we fuck, she be fucking me back, put her in a headlock with my elbow. Mm -hmm. Now she done reverse. I'm got a bone dick and brought this like a Camaro. Uh. She's either pregnant or she's fat. And she was never this fat when she was pregnant. You're such a fucking hoe. When women don't want to have sex, they still want you to want to have sex. So want to have sex, but don't. You're such a fucking, I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. Whoop. I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. Whoop. I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. Whoop. I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. Whoop. I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. I like my dick suck, I'll buy you a dick truck. I'll buy you some new kids, I'll get you that nip tuck. How you start a family that time is just up. I'm a sick fuck, I'm inappropriate. I like hearing stories, I like that whole shit. I wanna hear more shit, I like the whole shit. Send me some old shit, you trifling hoe bitch. bitch, bitch You're such bitch. a fucking hoe. You gays.